greetings and welcome back everybody i hope you enjoyed watching us dance there this well if you're watching on video this is the grinding gear podcast i'm garrett weinzerl here as always with my good buddy kyle ferguson the other Hello. half of the bromance ah yes the bromance part of romance.com yes Yes, how how are you doing, man? Good. We got we got a steaming pile of games to talk about today. I'm very excited for some upcoming announcements. Things I didn't know were coming out till today. It's a, it's a good time. I'm I'm enjoying a hit new Netflix show. I guess you could call it. Uh, there's, there's lots going on. It is on. trending. Yeah. You go up there. It's right next to the Coco Melon. <laughs> Does Netflix have Coco Melon? Yes, it 100% does, cool. and it is every time I go in, it's like a bunch of violent, uh, smutty, vulgar uh, adult oh. uh, shows and Coco Melon. No, Coco Melon is <laughs> yeah. Coco Melon is a crime. Uh, Coco Melon should be deleted from the internet. <laughs> they have such fabulous songs as "Are We There Yet?" Like they're just they're it's bad. It's training children to be obnoxious. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and they're just like they're horrible. It's like don't spill on the rug. Uh 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 uh. Don't spill on the. It's just complete trash. Can complete you tell trash. which one of these two voices has a child? I I connoisseur. I make sure I watch everything in advance, and mm. it's, it's a labor of love. Mm, wonderful. Well, you you made me think of something, Kyle. Mm. You made me think of the longest I was ever grounded. The reason I was grounded for the longest amount of time. Yes. I, I was grounded for a full month. Television and gaming consoles were taken out of my room. And like put in the attic. That's 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 how how serious this offense was for watching South Park. Really? I was caught watching South Park. This was during its first season, to give you an idea of how young I was. Mm. So this was the late 90s. Uh, would have been before I was a teen. This would have been pre-teen years. You going to do that? You going to you going to you going to monitor what your kids are watching like post 10 years old? Yeah. Are you going to be one of those parents? I don't know. You know, I I I chose some select South Park phrases to unleash on my parents that got me in trouble. So you do absorb your sponge of sorts, but also like our generation of parents saw The Simpsons as a vulgar TV show. So yes, I, I was not allowed to watch Simpsons growing up. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna have that sensibility. Uh, I definitely, mm. you know, The Simpsons wasn't wasn't bad. Uh, that that always struck me as kind of odd. But I also no, I love there, South there was Park a hot. Too. There was a hot second where, uh, like, some of my earliest memories, I remember watching The Simpsons and it was no big deal. And just one day it was like, no, you're not allowed to watch that. I, was just, I don't even understand why. And I, I think I was too young to even absorb anything at that point. Because, like, this is a really foggy memory for me. I was very, very young. There was a disconnect with, like, cartoons and cartoons are for kids. And even when Family Guy was coming out, there was a lot of parents really concerned that the medium, the vessel of these jokes would appeal to children. And therefore, they would absorb it and emulate it harder. Which I think is kind of fair. I, I, the the longest I ever got grounded was I hid my report card multiple times. Like I destroyed the ah. report card that I was given at school. So my parents called the school and requested a new one. I destroyed that when it arrived in the mail. And then I hid the next one that arrived too. I had a D in Spanish. So we didn't know I was dyslexic uh, yet. But you know, I, I was just only... failing everything language related at the time. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. I had a couple friends that didn't realize they were left-handed until later in life, and uh, they really got wrecked by cursive. Hmm. Yeah. yeah that, that's a, that's yeah. Our the nineties. The nineties was mm -hmm. still of the time period mm -hmm. where that's the wrong hand and bizarreness there. Yeah, we, we you know we've come a long way. I'm happy. We've come a long way. I'm we're happy actually, for that. you know. I, f I feel like there's a lot of things, you know, you might look at the world and be like, eh, it's a little scary. And that's true. You know, it's, it's, it's always room for improvement. But I feel like in some ways, at least for at least for making an attempt to recognize things like that, at least for at least for trying, because it felt like when I was a kid, we weren't even trying. No, we weren't even, we weren't even trying. No, but yeah. Anyway, if you can't tell, we, we have both watched Cyberpunk 2077 Edge Runners smash hit new Netflix anime from Studio Trigger. 
Oh, such a good I'm studio. told I'm told that means something. I actually am not particularly familiar with them. All I know is they did my favorite of the the Star Wars Visions shorts. Yes. They are if I were to explain from the outside cuz I'm not I'm not a knowledgeable connoisseur. I watch mm. as much as I can, but I don't really research while I'm watching anime because I'm busy reading. So it's, it's different when I'm watching like, you know, Rings of Power. I'm like on my phone being like, oh, you know, what's this actor? And like doing the Wikipedia thing. Don't do that during anime because I'm reading. Uh, they're, they're known for very wild, loose animation, and they bypass their budgeting restraints through that. So you may have noted during one particular fight scene in episode three, I think it was, it just went to hell. Like everything was super loose and super gooey and everyone's arms was flailing about and there's lots of motion and energy to it. There's a long armed character. Yes. And just the way they animate that man just throws me for a loop every time he's on screen. And uh, it's... It's fantastic. So yeah, we're going to, don't worry, don't run everybody. We're going to keep this uh, uh, spoiler, unless you consider our, did we like it or not a spoiler? We're not going to mention spoilers. Yes, um, we, we do a special thing for Patreon though. If you go to support ourbromance.com, you can get access to special spoiler shows we do over there. So when we're done with Edge Runners, we'll probably do one of those like we did for, uh, for Rings of Power and Game of Thrones. Yeah, I'm still, I'm going to be honest, I'm still mulling around in my mind, like maybe when you get to episode five, because I'm halfway through, so I, I could do like a part one, part two, if you wanted. I mean, um, it just came out one big block, so I'm kind of feeling yeah, like seeing it they're all. Doing, they're doing the old Netflix thing that Netflix is kind of inconsistent about, but I I think they recently announced that they're going to stop doing that. They're going to stop dumping all the episodes Aww. at once. I like I'm it. Of two, I'm of two minds. I'm of two minds. When it's shorter stuff like this, I like it all at once. But if you've got like a 40 minute or longer show, do it week to week. I miss the water cooler. I like the social experience of slowly going through a show week to week. Like Mandalorian, uh, I don't want to be able to binge. I love that for however few episodes they decide to grace us with like seven weeks out of the year. We're all week to week just in Star Wars land talking about the new episode. Like to, that to me is part of the experience. I would have been less interested. I would have watched, like, I'm enjoying it. I love Studio Trigger, so I would have watched it all anyway if it was coming out week to week. But I would have likely gotten to the end of the first two episodes and then stopped for a long period of time, like, and just let it build up. So I'm way happier in this universe. Hmm, that's fair. That's fair. Um, shorter shows, I'm all for it. There's a there's a dark comedy series on HBO called Barry, uh, and they do a week to week, and I can't stand it because the episodes are like 28 minutes and it's it's really good. It's very well written. Um, it has uh, a pretty serious and intriguing arc, even though it's a comedy. Um, and we had already seen the first two seasons after they'd come out. So we binged the whole thing. And then season three came out. We tried watching week to week and I just couldn't stand it. So we just waited until it was all out. I could never do it with something like My Hero Academia, where so much of that show is filler flashbacks, all that kind of business. Like uh, I, I have yeah. not forgotten that much in a week. You have to spend at least five minutes catching me up. Mm, and then that's you got to play the song and do the dance. And then, it's, oh. it's, but that falls into my, my under 40 minutes though. That's the under 40 minutes. If it's a, if it's a shorter show, just give me the whole thing. They did the right the thing. thing. And naturally, yeah. like I've been hearing tons of people checking out the video game. So it's working as intended. Like tons of people uh, seeing the <laughs> anime, going and buying the I'm actual game. I'm one of game. them. I bought it. Full I, price? I, you bought a full price? I, oh, it's currently 30 bucks on uh, the Xbox store. And I was like, I was looking at it and I did some research on uh, like how the Xbox version performs. Because it looked like the type of game I want to see on my big TV. And I've read some reviews and it seems like now it's running pretty damn well on the Xbox. So I was like, eh, it's 30 bucks. Screw it. Let's go. Let's see what this is about. So I'll talk about that a little bit later when we, when we talk about what games we're playing. But yes, I am one of those people. I now own cyberpunk the game. Uh, oh, okay. It's apparently 50% off on steam as well. Huh? Why? Oh, you know, I may have, I may have given it one of those clicks. That's like, I don't want to see this anymore because I was hurt. Oh. I was hurt at the time. I may have deleted the number. Yeah, it is. It is 50% off. And you know, that's, it's a yeah. very intriguing world. There's tons of world building and hilarious <laughs> ways <laughs> that they go about it. Oh, in fact, on their Steam page here, the very first video that plays is of the anime. Or it goes into um it goes into the game. Like they're mixing the two. Like, hey, hey, you want to play this anime here? Ooh, now you want to play this game. They're combining. 
All right, forget it. We're just going to go out of order. I'm just going to talk about Cyberpunk now because we're talking about it. Uh, yes, there is some major similarities between the opening of the game and the early episodes of the anime. Cool. But that's what I want. I, I, I want some dystopian shit you know, <laughs> entering my eyeballs. <laughs> I want to I want to feel, you know, all of it. And the anime is yeah. doing that. It's, it's, a, it's a slam dunk in that regard. I'm I'm in love with it. I'm over the moon with uh, the anime for for uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Um, How's the game feel? The game I haven't played a ton. I I I, I so I bought it yesterday because Katie and I have been working our way through the anime. We're both enjoying it enough. I think I'm enjoying it a little more than Katie, but but she you know not like against it like she has been with other anime. I've tried to get her into. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, I installed last night and I spent most of my night just making my character and laughing at the uh, penis options. Sure. So, sure. you know, like you do, yeah, I, it's the future forgot that was a thing. <laughs> and it's like the last option too. And there's so many options for, for like customizing your character. So I'm like doing, I am plants choosing my weird, the hair options are wonderful. As a connoisseur of hair options of video games, cyberpunk 2077 delivers, um, uh, so I only played about two hours of actual gameplay. So I'm like still in the intro, basically. And uh, it's fine. It's a little, it's still a little janky. It's very pretty. It runs very well hmm. on the, uh, I have an Xbox Series X and I uh, have a, a 4K TV and it's freaking gorgeous. It runs at 4K 60, no stuttering. I did see one T-pose, a character <laughs> glitched out into a T-pose for about two seconds and I went, yep, yep, it's still issues with this game, but for oh, the most part, it's working fine. It's a dark yeah. future, you know, people get hacked and T-posed occasionally. Most of the stuff I think would, I would just find jarring is the car stuff. And that's still my biggest concern. I haven't gotten to drive yet. I've okay. gotten to ride in a lot of cars. Uh, the intro involves like riding in cars while people have conversations. You would love it because they don't, they, they, they don't do a walk and talk, they do a drive and talk. So, uh, oh no, you like walk and talks. Yes, I, I do. I do like walk you and love talks. it. They're not sedentary when they're having did conversations. You see, okay, are... but did you, there were scenes in that anime. You know, let's not be retread last week, but there were more than enough options and they were showing plenty of different camera angles throughout the anime. That's what I'm talking about. Like, oh even... my God. So uh, you're up to, there's a see, there's a moodily lit scene in an apartment. Do you know the scene I'm talking about? Yes, exactly. That is some of the most beautiful framed shots painted shots angles of yes. shots compositions yes. everything about it and it's just two characters talking and i was watching it and i'm like i can see where they're saving animation budget there's like they'll just do totally. a close-up on like a poster on the wall or whatever and i don't care but it's because it's building. so pretty yeah yes also I, it made me care about the characters that's a, that that scene i'm talking about is a, it's very very nice they, no, it got like me. even it got me the, in the butt shot like when the camera's like squarely on her butt <laughs> <laughs> it's at least sharing some information that like her thighs are augmented, you know, and you kind of go like, damn, like she's, she's pretty deep into this world. That's kind of, uh, yeah, the whole anime is just, uh, you know, nudie as hell, sexy as hell, yeah, well, but it's like, you're here for? It, I think, I think, you know, we were talking about hand wave. You were defending God of early God of War's honor saying, don't just hand wave it. Cause there's like uh, 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 quick time sex scenes. Like the, uh, they, yes. they, they, they thought about it. They thought about why this character would want to get lost in, in pleasures of the however, flesh. Yes. Pleasures of the, however he can get away. And that's how I kind of feel. I was watching like the first episode. I was just open face laughing. Like at just how kind of grotesque they were going for it. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's just ridiculous. Um, but the more I watch it and the more like people are just like running around nude, I'm like, you know, in a world where you could modify your body, you probably would want to show it off. You just be like, yeah, I could look, look at how far I went. Well, and the dystopian escaping online, like it, it's that experimental human step that could be taken. Should this world go there? It, I'm hoping that the cyberpunk video game is a little more joyful than something like uh, Blade Runner. Like Blade Runner was just so depressing. I, I, I did not I, have I fun to talk with to you that about that recent movie. I'm, I'm glad you bring it up, uh, even though you're wrong. Cause uh, the Bl I'm not both wrong Blade that Runner it's movies. depressing. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's <laughs> both depressing. Blade Runner movies, both Blade Runner movies are essentially perfect films. So uh, there's, there's that, um, no, the, the, I'm, I'm jumping on We have a long history that the listeners of this podcast may not be aware of where you're like, I can't watch Blade Runner. It's a bummer. And I'm like, it is like my comfort movie when I'm sick. If I am sick on a couch, cannot move Blade Runner's going on, but 
Um, yeah, I was thinking about that, that they're, they're kind of two ends of the spectrum. Like Blade Runner is much more grounded and interested in the, you know, the human psyche part of in a world where you can basically replace every part of your body. What does that mean? What makes a human? That kind of a thing, especially Blade Runner, the two films specifically dealing with replicants. And, oh, the first one. Yeah, the first one is well, both of them deal game. with replicants and the question of like, you know, where does the line between created intelligence and actual humans where does that blur and it, ex it 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 explores that and i love that kind of stuff i know it's usually not your bag no i walk i like particularly the recent one with ryan gosling i just walked away with like deeply <sighs> saddened and troubled oh i love it not enjoy i'm not saying it's bad it. i'm saying i did not personally enjoy the exploration of the digital girlfriend like mm. Oh, mm. it just makes me so like, oh, it's so sad. It's so, sad. It's, it's so <laughs> tragic, man. It, uh. it is, but that's like what I like. I like dark drama. Like I, I enjoy that. I love, especially in live action. I love throwing actors into that type of extreme dramatic scenario and just seeing what they do with it. So, you know, for me, that's just like total freaking catnip. Um, but the point I was trying to make is they're, they're both, you know, lowercase cyberpunk fictions, but they're vastly different. Like one is kind of a, a study of humanity, whereas uh, cyberpunk 2077 is a lot more action, like heightened reality pushed to the extreme while still having some interesting nuance and stories to tell. I'm curious about their expansion. It's not where I personally expected them to take the story, but I think it'll be a great vessel for action. Uh, their, you know, upcoming, yeah. was it like Liberty Unfolds or something along those lines? Phantom Liberty. Phantom Liberty is the uh, upcoming expansion 2023 for the Cyberpunk. And I didn't think they were going to do one. So, jeez, it, it was a rough launch. And it definitely lost a lot of points for CD Projekt Red. Now, it's worth admitting that I joined The Witcher 3 after everything was out. Like, completely missed it. I played one. It was an MMO, a solo play MMO. It was bad, in my opinion. Two was too crunchy. Like, I really didn't... I don't like the way the way two plays. I all. really enjoyed two at the time, but this feels like ancient history at this point. And then three, I just was like head over heels in love with restarted it on hard. So money mattered. And I think that's my biggest question. If anyone can kind of answer that for me about cyberpunk 2077, can I set it to a difficulty or a mode where money matters? Because staying hungry is the whole point. It's the hardest thing to pull off in a firefly sort of uh, world that you might be designing cowboy bebop for D and D it is so hard to manage player money. And I think Witcher 3 on on its hardest difficulty really kind of made you like haggle with the locals and like, yeah, I'll do that. But, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need some extra gold because I'm really after this one armor set that I need because the game's hard. And that, I assume that's the point. Like, you know, much like the anime showcase, I'm like, you know, money. That's you got to get your eddies or euros or they're, they're called eddies. Yeah. I think talk yeah. about Euros for a little bit. So I'm I got really her sure. subtitles on the game because I it was, it was four episodes deep into the anime by the time I fired up the game. And I think subtitles are on by default on the game. And I was like, oh, Eddie's, that's what they're saying. Yeah. Because in my head, I was like, there's no way they're calling it Eddie's. That seems wrong. But, <laughs> but that's what they call what, it. What are they called that's... in Star Wars? What's the money, the currency? Well, there's different currencies. That's why Republic credits are no good here. Uh, the credits, yes. The credits. Yeah. 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 But, um, I bet you I it falls apart. Like most RPGs, it probably falls apart. You become super rich at some point or you run out of things to spend money on. And that's really, if they can if they can nail that maybe with the expansion a little bit, like maybe take away your funds because you go off on this new adventure, I don't know. But I really, yeah. I really need money to matter in order to participate in a dystopian world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chat, chat saying money doesn't really matter no matter the difficulty ah, is, is what I'm seeing in chat. But. Bummer. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe difficulty will beat the difficulty. Maybe, maybe you'll just die a lot, and that'll yeah, keep you hungry. I don't like it enough. I just threw it on normal. We'll see how it goes. The shooting seems solid. Um, that's, that's all is what I'm worried about. That's why I don't like Borderlands. I don't think the shooting is particularly good. Uh, I've always thought Borderlands isn't the most... It always seems a little vague. 
um, mm. as far as if my my hits are registering or impacting. Like there's it's, it's something I struggle to describe, but like yeah, it's just vague shooting is how I would describe something like Borderlands, and it's what will turn me off of a shooting based game. And um, I really like uh, I really like the shooting so far in cyberpunk seems all right we did all of borderlands 2 co-op here and it was uh it was good it for me it was missing that diablo base kind of feel where in diablo 3 you'd kind of go back and you'd like sort your inventory like as a shooter i want to be running and gunning a lot like i love halo where it's like damn this gun's out of you know ammo throw to the side pick up another gun two pistols like that that's that's the energy I enjoy. And even if, you know, you're hiding them all on your backside, like GoldenEye does, I got that on the mind. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. I, I, I just want to feel like I'm always in motion in a shooter. And that's why Doom is amazing. Even though you control way more than two sets of combos of guns on like Halo. The Doom. I don't know how we ended up such close friends because we have such wildly different tastes. Like, I do not care for Doom. Doom is a puzzle shooter. No, we we agree on Halo. I, you know, we, I just brought up Halo. We can we can connect. I thought you, I thought you were saying you preferred it to Halo because to me, like Halo is like the end all be all of shooters. No, Halo is an entirely different game. Uh, Halo is ideally a co op experience. You know, that's been forgotten recently. You know, no, that is that is something you and I do agree on. That Halo is more about uh, playing it on legendary as co op than it is about the multiplayer. It's like a tactical shooter using the guns available to you. Doom is more like. Doom is more like a Mario game where you got it. Where I, I actually like Banjo Kazooie better. I, so I'll go Banjo Kazooie because I, you know, you got to get the super jump in order They're to get great. to a certain thing. And you have to have the golden feathers to beat this kind of enemy. And that's what Doom is. You got like buttons one through nine, all are different uh, weapon types. And knowing the ion gun, gun break shields, and you should switch to the other thing and doing the other thing. Like, that's fun. I, I think there's a lot of fun to be had in games that maybe don't have good shooting, but have outrageous weapons like the old Turok and like Cerebral Boar kind of stuff was really, really fun back in the day. I think Half-Life does that really well, too, where you just have like you got your antlion grenades and just fun, fun shit to play with. Uh, see, I'm, I'm the type I pick favorites like Half-Life. I went through with like mostly the machine gun, the shotgun. And if it's Half-Life 2, the, the gravity gun, obviously. Yeah, I really like the... um what's the those ribbed cords the that shoots out a crossbow that was really fun and they were hot for no reason at all but it was a fun gun mm, it was a i've never been a crossbow guy never yeah. been a crossbow guy it's like the sniper I, I, rifle the early one you got in that game yeah we've, we've talked about how i have this weird disconnect where i love playing archers in fantasy games and and mmos but i i don't like bows arrows or crossbows in any other video game Except Last of Us 2, the explosive arrows are fantastic. The gibs in Last of Us 2 are so satisfying. It's really just about if it's powerful enough to warrant the load time when it comes mm. to bows and shooters. Like I, I like the, the grunt pistol, right? You go, boo, like that's, that's satisfying, particularly when you're breaking shields. And that's kind of that, take that grunt pistol good at breaking shields and crank it to 11, that's doom. Like having the mm. right weapon for each situation. I like doing that for disabling vehicles. That's my favorite thing for the grunt pistol. Okay. Yeah, that works. Too. Dude, we got to play infinite whenever they figure out their damn co-op. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. It's well, such a good campaign. It's a weird world, you know, like Overwatch also planning to release without any sort of PVE option being the major selling point for a ton of people. I don't I, like... I, Today, you know, there's talk about Overwatch doing uh, battle passes and stuff and why Blizzard believes it's going to be a good thing for the game. He here's my here's my take on that. We'll just skip that whole bit of news. Wait, the company that made the decision is saying that it's a good decision? Yes, I know. Shocking, I just want right? to make sure we're clear. Absolutely okay, I'm so, it's such a relief because I was worried that Blizzard thought of the battle pass they're forcing on the game is a bad idea. They have the most suspect YouTube comments in the world is really the news <laughs> I want to highlight from this. <laughs> they show off their new hero, uh, Kiriko, who, you know, the people are calling like support Genji. She's going to do like a bunch of, um, oh, I, oh geez. Oh man. I, I forget. I watched some anime about, um, it was a very big relationship anime. I watched it with Kristen. I don't really remember. It was fun. Uh, you know, but there was like a Fox God and she worked a shrine and, you know, found love or something. Anyway, it, it, it's she she shoots out like talismans 
and they attach and they do things and she's run around like teleporting and stuff like that she looks pretty fun to play but top top comment with 60 or well not 60 six 0.3k likes is this is the greatest day of my life yes 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 everything about this hero and it just goes on and on like this for pages and pages <laughs> it's nothing but i am so in love i can't believe you finally did this finally a support for me she seems so fun like it's so positive you know they're kind of suing this hard <laughs> deeply suspect and you go to their twitter and it's a mess you know, so we can't moderate our our Hearthstone live stream tournament chat, but we're going through and getting rid of every anything that isn't <laughs> praise on the. Is that what you're accusing them of? I I mean, I, maybe they're good at turn based uh, moderation, not real time moderation. I don't know. Mm. Uh, you know, one one is certainly easier than the other, but you know that's what employees and community management is for. So this this whole announcement is just so sour in my book. Oh my goodness. Uh, they, who, who goes to, oh, maybe they'd still go to YouTube and just type hype, but you know, it, it's 2022. Like we, we still get a first every week on our, that on our, is true. Yeah, it ends up at the bottom small corner of the internet. It ends up at the bottom. So somebody's downvoting it or the algorithm is like, this is not a useful comment. Let's put it the bait. The amazing. We still get it for a lot of times they'll go back in and like re-edit it. <laughs> they leave the first, but then they, they come back and edit it and throw in their comment, but which is fine. I, I, I think it's so cute. I don't want the, the, the yelling first, to ever die like no. I, just, I find it adorable it's like so say we all this is just how youtube youtubes like i don't want to see that go away but yeah i don't know man i i got nothing to say other than blizzard is a mess and that's not no i'm not blowing any minds These are bots. That. this is farmed comments blizzard is an absolute mess right now over they sent out a survey this week basically blaming uh, uh influencers for people not buying the battle pass for hearthstone battlegrounds what like uh, oh, oh was it it's a survey so it was like there's like seven or eight so if you choose that you didn't buy the battle pass it then generates a follow-up of why didn't you buy the battle pass and uh -huh. like four like half of the answers are a different version of an influencer said it was bad oh man yeah yeah and only one option is i don't like the changes you made <laughs> <laughs> and there's it's, no option for you made it pay to win which is what everyone's pissed about right well i mean i'd probably do that too honestly which could fall under the i don't like the changes you made but like the way it's with all those options you're reading all of them you're just like this is this is bullshit but when you're <laughs> gathering information you want to avoid the obvious answer and probe a little deeper so i don't find that one bothersome if i was trying to mm. do my job and ants as a community manager or whoever's kind of manning that under whatever title uh i would probably do that too because i'm like yes i'm aware you're mad that it costs money please tell me something else that i can actually actionable suggestions it didn't pop up with like a text box and be like which influencer ruined our chance and making money, did it? <laughs> no okay no, it did not. what a weird world we find ourselves in there too with influencers like Tons of people are having problems even getting their names in game. Like when you know when they log in first day, all their names, all their alt names are already taken. Uh, a lot of influencers are calling for people to, you know, for video game companies. If you're gonna give me a beta, let me reserve my name. This is my name, my brand. If you're gonna do this, like let's let's have some back and forth here. And you also have what's going on with Zeppla today. We're just banned on Twitch for an hour, but they deleted a huge amount of her followers. More than half of yeah. her followers, right? Just insane. Yeah, I, I just saw this over lunch, so I, I don't know the details, but like you said, it looks like it was over pretty quick. They thought she was impersonating herself? Apparently. There's lots of theories about, you know, how this went down, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a messy deal. And of course, there's been tons of, you know, YouTube and Twitch drama over the last two years as algorithms oh, yeah. continue they, they to go back, do their they, thing. They, they go back and forth between pissing off their their communities right like youtube it's usually more on the side of <laughs> the complete like you can't you, you can't really depend on how much money's coming in from ad payout because it fluctuates wildly with no warning however there's also still people getting banned on youtube and you know that does happen from time to time but then feels like it's more often on the twitch side of things i hear about people getting banned for like the dumbest reasons or straight up mistakes like this just seems wrong 
I mean, we don't we don't have a, a comment from anyone from Twitch saying what the hell went wrong. No, which, hoping we'll get one, but this just seems like they thought Zeppelin wasn't Zeppelin and banned Zeppelin and. Well, and knocking her down it would just be like a hundred and seventy thousand followers. Like that's that's going to take months to recover. There's we just of- hit twenty three thousand on YouTube, yeah. and I'm stoked about it. I can't imagine being up that high and losing that many. Well, and then you have to communicate to your fans and get them to go re like. And tons of people are saying that in their comments that look, oh, I'm gone too. I had to head over there. I'm, I'm I haven't actually checked out if I've unfollowed her now over there as well. Like you got to go hit that button, and that's. There's a disconnect there because people want their content pipeline to be clean. And when things disappear, you assume the worst. You assume that, oh, well, they're done. They've deleted everything from the internet. Yeah. Yeah. It is a podcast world. You know, it's like, do we have a name for that? Is there, is there stream fading? Stream is that a fading. Thing? Yeah. We call it pod fading and podcast that's world. That's a very different thing, I believe, right? That was when a show didn't produce for a while. And so it was suspected it was going offline permanently right that was kind of the pod yeah thing. basically it's what pod fading means okay i pod faded r2t2 pod faded sure but well, it's it's natural you know i pod faded on dm gives inspiration like you i didn't want to admit that i was ending my personal show because I, I loved it but it was a lot of hard work that i didn't have time for well, and for me it was just like if i ever return to it i don't want some stinker of a episode that i can't unspider you know, like I can delete it from my website, but <laughs> Spotify holds on to things for a very long time. So, you know, there might be this like, hey, everybody, oh, you know, show's going away for a bit sitting in there. If I get back to it in two, three years, you know, maybe maybe I get super into D&D one. Hate the name. Uh, <laughs> call it sixth edition. It doesn't matter. I, you can't go back to one. You cannot go back to one when you're a long living brand. You can't no. do it. It, and then it we'll, doesn't work. We're all just going to call it sixth anyway eventually because you'll make a seventh because that's how you make money stop this madness like yeah just just stop just stop yep well i'm hoping twitch can do something to fix this because this sucks um yeah i that's the scary you were banned once that wasn't fun no and they they fixed it that that was you know pretty young in my career right like that was there was a lot of people who saw the ban saw me even try to explain it and said i don't want any part in drama kyle whatever you're doing here whatever you did is morally wrong because Twitch said so. And I was like, what? It is the dumbest shit. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like, for, for anyone cool. not in the know, I'll give the short version. There was a Suns Out Guns Out event and Here's the Storm. And I did a pool stream with my wife where we had swimsuit tops on. Like, and that was, that was ban worthy at the time. And I period. believe they said they banned it for you, not for Kristen. Right. And you were just streaming with your shirt open. Right. I was I was the one responsible for the situation. And yeah, I had an open shirt. You know, that, nothing showing. Like, you know, it was cut down. The the middle was flesh. Which is ridiculous now because you, now you can do beach streams. You can do pool streams. You can do hot tub streams. Yeah, like, or even besides that, you can do workout streams where, you know, you whip off your shirt because that's what you do when you got muscles. You find every excuse to remove yeah. said shirt. Yeah, exactly. I tried to get you to take your shirt off last week and you wouldn't do it. I, so, I'm not going to do it. I'm not, not on streams. No, there is a time and place for it. And it's called Twitter. <laughs> You're afraid. You're afraid to get banned. Yeah, I am. Well, hey man, next time you're in town, we'll do a we'll do a beach or a pool stream. It was an intense experience. All right, give me that three months. I want that diet. I want to do that diet. I'm, I'm enjoying my workouts. Okay, okay. I, I, dude, you're diet. gonna be next to me. You're gonna look great. I, dude, Don't it's, worry. It's not, what about when you exit frame? You know, I gotta sustain. I gotta sustain mm, during that time period. Mm, okay. Okay. Fine, Kyle. Fine. We gotta get our hot tub fixed. The pump is not working. <laughs> We, we have a spa that we inherited from a friend that didn't want it anymore and the pump no longer works. Well, I'm so. excited to hear your continued adventures through Cyberpunk. And since it is on sale, naturally, I'm very much like, wow. Uh, by the way, I should probably do an update. I don't think I'll be getting Cyberpunk until I update that computer. Talking about last week, I got a lot of really good advice. I really appreciate everybody who reached down was telling me a little about what the numbers mean. And it seems like my motherboard port can handle a 3060 Ti. And then I could move that to the new kind of motherboard later on. So that's the best update I, I can do right I now. I told you this and in. you told me I was wrong. I, I, I told you a I PCI you Express port is a PCI Express port. It doesn't matter. But the, I think it's a PCI Express point two and point threes are compatible with threes and twos. And in the past, like you change numbers, you change the port. So I, I did not mm. trust your information. I apologize. I apologize. I didn't <laughs> trust your information. You, you don't understand, folks. This is a completely like off-air conversation. Kyle shut me down so fast. So I thought, fast. I thought you were wrong. Again, I'm like wildly out of date. <laughs> With my 2013, and I didn't stand parts. up for myself because I'm also I can't remember the last time I actually tried to learn something about computer parts. So I was like, I, I just so accept. Dense. I accept what you're telling me. It's I accept what you're telling dense. me. Um, yeah. But 
I think you know I'm gonna I'm gonna plug that in and I should be able to do some some cyberpunk. I'll be excited for that. So nice know, soon to come. Nice. I, I was so I'm stoked a... for that game, man. I was so hurt. I was looking forward to it. Cyberpunk is one of my like favorite settings like not 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 capital c cyberpunk the brand like cyberpunk as a fiction like we talk about fantasy or sci-fi uh steampunk etc i love cyberpunk not a big not a big steampunk fan no you know no no shade it's never it's never grabbed me it's never grabbed me but i digress um steampunk's you wanna... a very different thing they both have punk but yeah it's a yes. extremely different aesthetic. yes but, but i'm trying to describe like cyberpunk as a genre not as a singular tabletop ip like the hats though you were moving on though yes i was i wanted to see if you wanted to see what was in the news this week let's do that good 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 oh great news everyone shove it i think you should slide it in a in a kneeling fashion not shove it this week because uh two completely unrelated golden eye remasters were announced this week Rare's been busy. Choose your fighter. No, this is not Goldeneye Red and Blue. You don't need to get both to collect all of the James Bond characters. This is just too completely unrelated. So Nintendo announced a re-release of the classic N64 Goldeneye. You know, somewhat visually upgraded. Right. It's And it, it, yeah. Microsoft announced a completely redone re-release that rare made but they both are remasters right we're not doing remakes uh, it's sort of kind of the, the the xbox one looks like a ground up remake i mean it's it's so different looking hmm. what i read in this uh, kotaku article was the switch version is presumably just a port running on emulators with additional features the xbox version will be a promised expansion of sorts to the original game with achievements dual analog stick support 4k resolution and smoother frame rate. so i still think this is under the remaster title still a remaster okay but okay anytime i see emulator i'm like ooh. particularly because you know i've been playing on pc for so long a lot of steam ports have been really bad in the past. Yeah, right yeah yeah no okay I, i'm 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 mistaken i saw i saw how bad could information you on twitter it's i saw so bad clear. information on twitter it does look the same um it's a mess i hate the remaster remake reborn relaunch like, <laughs> resurrected it's awful yes yes so i guess the major difference between the two of these is that the switch version is going to have online multiplayer and the Xbox version is not, but it will have local multiplayer. Well, we don't know that yet because Xbox just has better internet. Lots of like Switch runs on Wi-Fi. It's shoddy. It's, you know, and it's also, it's a family console, right? So troubleshooting it, there's probably a lot more complaints than might exist. Uh, I went and got a USB port for my Ethernet cable for my Switch so I could plug it directly into the Internet, and I never had any issues. I never had any disconnects while I was super into Pokemon Unite and that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm not concerned about the connectability and the sustained connection for my Switch because I've bypassed that of a sort. However, if Xbox actually does come out with an actual, like, play online feature... They're, yeah. they're not going... They've already... They've confirmed they're not doing it. That's the that's why this is like the big difference between the two. Nintendo's version will have online multiplayer and Microsoft's will not. Like hard no, not going to have it. Hmm. Why? Why not? I don't know. Yeah, why does the console that has dog shit online capability get the online multiplayer Weird. and the one that has has, you know, standard what we expect from online connectivity doesn't. I must it it feels like this was a licensing nightmare that both these were being developed in tandem and it, it's a rights issues hell. And they, you know, they split the product. That's what that's the vibe I'm getting. This oh. is me editorializing. Yeah. Oh. I, 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 has, has it, for its entire existence just been a licensing nightmare ever since Rare split with Nintendo. Yeah, well, GoldenEye has just been stuck in limbo. I'm just going to put this on now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. 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 Uh, this TikTok trend has been murdered because it's been so overplayed. But that one the dude who did the TikTok about them making the Golden Eye music. Oh yeah, yeah. Classic. Or, or um, uh, b -b 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 
Genesis dude on the beach with the piano making Tarzan music. It's a great meme. No matter what sort of genre it exists from, it's a great meme. The music was so good. It was the pause music was insane. I still don't know if this is faculty or facility because I couldn't read when I first play it. I love it. Uh, so many good memories diving into I that. I also called it faculty. I'm pretty sure it's facility. I'm pretty sure but it I also is called too. It faculty. But it, it was great and diving in and out of the toilets and you know in the bathrooms and running around shooting each other in the temple with the grenade launcher bouncing. Oh, what a great game! My my favorite Goldeneye movie. Just it, I was. My generation's James Bond, right? Like it, it was it was the right time. My dad brought it home. We watched it together. Huge Pierce Brosden double O fan. Like just me and my dad have a big connection on this, so I'm always gonna love Goldeneye. And it's my favorite of the Pierce Brosden. Uh uh Dad Dad was a Roger Moore fan because that was his bond, so I watched a lot of Roger Moore James Bond growing up. He's um, all right. He's all right. Yeah. And then my dad's also a giant poker nerd, so we we went and saw Casino Royale together. So we have a a connection on that one as well but um i think i'll play this on xbox hmm. I, you know i have a lot of nostalgia for golden eye um in my late 20s when i was when i like was renting my first home i grabbed all of my old video games from my parents and my cousin and i would get together once in a while and fire up the n64 like the actual n64 um golden eye doesn't hold up N64 controls for GoldenEye, they are not great. And so Xbox saying that's going to have dual analog, that's enough to make me go, I could blaze through GoldenEye with dual analog controls. That sounds like a nice way to experience this game. So refresh my memory here. Was it that you had to stop full stop to aim? You would like kind of lock your feet in position and then you would aim with the... If you wanted to control your aim, if you remember the game also had really helpful auto aim. Where you like, if you were just kind of running around, you wouldn't like kind of see the gun kind of snap. Right. To I remember that the little kind AK of, the kind of, of screen. floating around a bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Craftless. Yeah. John's saying generous auto aim. That's a great way to describe it. Yeah. I'm trying to remember because I was, I was a champion, you know, big fish, small pond for sure. But the grenade launcher in that temple level, I could bounce that thing like a villain. Like an absolute monster. <laughs> so I think I... Well, there's so many right angles. Yeah, I think I kind of remember like I would lock into position and then move on a grid. Like, you know, you had full 3D movement, but I think I would move my gun up and then kind of be locked in that angle while I moved about. Obviously... Um, you could also use the the C buttons. The oh, So on the N64 controller for the younger folks out there, uh, it had C buttons that if you ever played on the GameCube eventually became a nipple joystick. But on the N64, it was four individual directional buttons. They were tiny yellow buttons. You could use those buttons to control your up and down axis. And that would lock if you let go. Dude, that nipple was the shit in... Uh, Smash Brothers. Smash Bros. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need to do A A in direction anymore. You just flick the nipple. Right, because it was fun to be like charging up in certain situations, but sometimes you just wanted a really, really quick power attack. And yep. when I got into multiverse very, very briefly there, I'm fully out. Uh, I was like, oh, where's my where's my quick power? This is this is bad. Where's my quick power? I need that. Yeah, yeah. I abuse the shit out of that. And what was the Wii one? Brawl? I believe that was Brawl. Brawl. Yeah. Uh, both Pit and Link were my go-tos and they're downward A. It was so, because they both did yeah. a sword sweep, like forward back or back forward, I forget which direction. Um, but they, they were both very similar and they were both my favorite characters to play. Well, and, you bust uh, your thumb doing that all day long. You need the quick little pop. The On my, per, I can probably go find it somewhere. It's somewhere in this house. On my personal game controller, the top rubber of the C-stick is a little worn from me going downward on it sure. so much sure. playing smash brothers <laughs> sure down a was my number one use for the c stick on gamecube so it yeah. sounds like the switch being an emulator isn't going to fix this at least according to the kotaku article xbox is the one that's gonna do the dual stick support and yeah th it's which... they're they look like very similar products in terms of now that i um, corrected I I, I I don't know what screenshots people were sharing yesterday but they were not from what the actual xbox release is going to be they both look like the original game just you know rezzed up right. slightly to work on modern televisions because we were still playing on you know tube tvs back in the day well, ctr isn't that what it's called ctr C crt crts yeah though 
those yeah. did a lot of smoothing. Like there's a lot of movies and video games that looked way better in the past. In fact, uh, pixel art looked amazing on those old TVs. Nowadays, yep. we do pixel art because it's beautiful as well. But there was a lot. They were planning to have it smooth for you as intended. Yeah, yeah, just by nature of how CRTs work. So, um, yeah, that's it. So they're like kind of the same games, but so it just comes down to features. It's it's very it's very weird. It's like having two of the same cars, but one of them has like <laughs> it's like well, this one has cruise control, but this one has power windows. You can't get both. Sorry. And it's just a little it's a little odd, but to me the Xbox One seems a little more attractive from a gameplay perspective. Although Goldeneye being an old game where I'm primarily coming back to it for only a nostalgic reason, just being able to play it on handheld also, there is an an attraction there as well. But it's also part of it's locked behind their I think wildly overpriced subscription thing over on the Switch. My sister in law pays for it and she did a shared family thing with me. So are you enjoying it? I have a I have a higher opinion because I'm not paying for it naturally. Mm, it okay. is way too expensive for what do you get? The games are minimal and they announce these like Nintendo Direct just happened. And they announce these with a lot of you know like fanfare. And you're like, what well, what what's the difficulty? Are you having to like fully port it in? Is there some sort of layering you're having to do? Like, why does it take so long for you to give me pilot wings in this zone? I, I believe 1080 and Wave Race are getting added too, right? And those are th so as much smack as I talk about it, they do add the games I want to play. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that much. Like, true. They are laser aimed at the heart of my nostalgia for the Nintendo 64 with what they're putting up on that service. Curious. I believe this is going to be a part of that, but it'll also be on Xbox Game Pass. So, yes, I believe GoldenEye is the only one that didn't get a release date. Everything else that they announced. We know when it's coming out. GoldenEye is a to-be-determined release date. Um, but yeah, I'll probably just play. I already have Game Pass, so I'll probably just, yeah. Right. There's nothing that's going to occupy you for an extended period of time in there, except for like maybe like Mario RPG or something like that that you may have yeah. missed. But for the I most part... You had, oh, I would... Well, you have an older Xbox. This will probably work on that, right? Probably. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's not like it's going to oh, take dude, power should... or anything. <laughs> If this comes out after MM school, maybe we should just plan for it. Let's let's do a weekend where we see who can beat it first. Let's like let's do three, a two, race. one, go and just try and race to the end of Goldeneye. That would be fun. That long. It's probably maybe eight hours max. I used to beat that like on any given Sunday. I'd go just beat Goldeneye. I would do that with a a Star Fox 64. That was my Star Fox was super quick. That was like what? Maybe maybe three hours. About three to beat Star hours. Fox? Yeah. It wasn't rogue light, but, you know, it did have different branching paths you could take what was your favorite branch to take i always liked doing the one that took you through the underwater level i wasn't much for the i like the sun the sun was all right uh i'm sure it's an unpopular opinion but it was pretty easy mm. to get over the sun i didn't like failing missions on purpose to get to some of the weirder levels so that was always kind of a bummer like if when you were hanging out with bill or whatever the dog i think he was and you had to like let Star Wolf destroy the base in order to even get to maybe like Sector X. But I like Sector X a lot. Yeah, is this the enemy bio weapon? And all those sort of fabulous <laughs> lines. <laughs> I played a lot of Star Fox. Oh my God. Yeah, it's good stuff. Now I just want to go play some N64 games, which apparently I just said I don't want to pay for because uh, it's not a good enough deal. But, you know, if you want something. I have been convinced over the years that Star Fox 64 is deep in nostalgia for you and me and for us and our generation. 100%. Because anytime 100%. I talk to any older game players, they're like, that was bad when it came out. That was a horrible game. Oh, I loved it. I know. I think it's, I I think loved it's great. It. I think it's genius, but. I, I fell off once Rogue Squadron came out because really all I was doing with Star Fox was pretending I was playing a Star Wars game. Rogue Squadron had some very boring levels. I think overall the level quality of Star Fox was better. I think it's. I think it still holds up. My my brother has this uh, um, has a service and just watch. I was uh, got to play a little bit with him. I um, like the I like the linear levels of Star Fox, of uh, Rogue Squadron, any of the all range mode kind of levels. I just hated having to go and turn around. Oh, see, I'm the opposite. I I for, I love all range mode in Star Fox, and I prefer being able to turn around. I don't and, like doing bombing runs in Rogue Squadron. 
And in Rogue Squadron 2, they would still, they would still kind of like Tony Hawk, where a lot of the Tony Hawk levels, you could go wherever, but you still had like hill runs. And in Rogue Squadron, there was a couple like trench runs where if you were really good, you could turn around, but it wasn't really the point of the level. The V-Wing is probably my favorite ship ever in a video game. I love the, I love mini missiles. I love when Iron Man shoots out two missiles. Was that in Rogue Squadron? Four missiles and then becomes seven missiles. Well, I guess they you know, multiply eight missiles, but you know, and then all rain down. Yeah, I think the final level had the V wing, and it's you know it's shaped like a V, and it had uh, auto lock mini missiles, which got me to play Panzer Dragoon, which I also the story was bogus, you know, from the oh, outside. Oh, I remember this. I, I you know it was is, yeah, I remember very yeah, hard, I rem super hard. If you if you Google this on uh, Google, that's the stupidest sentence I've ever said. Uh, there's a shot of the opening level where it's the uh, the it's Planet Calamari. And it's, there's an opening shot where you're flying over like water in a beach. And I remember that is burned into my memory. I was all about the tie interceptor. Once you could unlock that, that was my go-to. That was a good one. It was fast. Oh, that was, a it was fast very one. fast. That's, very that's the one with the little V's forward of the tie fighter with the little. Yeah. Yeah. It's like almost po polygonal. Yeah. The way it like stretches out in front of it. And then there's a cut in where the, where the lasers are. I hated are. the Y wing levels so much. Those were so boring. Yeah. I love the design of the Y wing. I never liked them in the games. They're always slow but you get all the armor and the firepower, but they're too slow. They're just too slow. B-Wing is best wing. You're right, Hollow Val in chat. You're absolutely right. The B-Wing is the right. best one. Maybe you don't have a little obsessed with Hoth. That's the Hoth one, right? The B-Wing is the Hoth. Hoth no, that's, that's a speeder. Oh, it's, yeah. I always like how the speeder had like little, I don't know if it actually used them, but like little air brakes when it was like turning. Oh, the flaps. <laughs> yeah. But I just yeah. wish we could get off Hoth. I think he did in that game. Like eventually, I think there was a Cloud City or something. But there's a level in, I think it's the first Rogue Squadron where you go to, is it Corellia? Han Solo's home planet. And it's a speeder level. And it's like a mega city. And it's very different from Hoth. If you can't tell, I played a lot of Rogue Squadron. Oh, it, well, it, the game read to me. Like it instantly gained a billion points because it, it read you know, Rogue Squadron. The dude just start talking and talking about the level. This is the EX, like spinning the diagrams around. It was out of this world at the time. Like, absolutely insane. Oh, my God. The person's reading the lines. You know, that's why KOTOR, you know, will always have this elevated opinion because, hey. I, I just had to read all of Ocarina of Time. What do you mean I don't need to read this? Right, right. That was beautiful. Granted, you know, Ocarina of Time does kind of have a rhythm to it. Um, I wouldn't say it's poetry, but the music, the music highlighted which character was talking. They found ways around uh, that doing little riffs when certain characters would show up. So you'd be like, oh, okay, that's who's talking now. A lot of older games, they just left you to the wind. <laughs> well, while we're we on it here... Well, oh, go for it. While we're on here, we got a, we got a question uh, in our Discord about what we thought about all the directs and stuff that's happened this week. So was there anything else that happened in the, the Nintendo think for the, Direct? For the most part, for me, I, I think it's all kind of mediocre. Nothing really made me all that excited. Um, definitely nothing piqued my interest from the Nintendo Direct. Um, never been a big Fire Emblem fan. I think there was even more news about uh, Splatoon, which I have never enjoyed. <laughs> I just, I don't know, I'm fine. Splatoon. Let me know. Let me know when you're making a Zelda that isn't a Breath of the Wild sequel, which is going to be, you know, a decade from now, and I'll I'll perk up. Splatoon is a hyper violent game disguised as a kid's game, and that's why it's doing so well. Like every kid wants to shoot the big guns. It's a fun. It's fun. You like paint on stuff. It's it's like that Tony Hawk mode I talked about, graffiti. I think it was called, where you would like you know do tricks and you'd highlight this as that many points, and someone would have to come over and do more points. It, it, it's a territory control shooter, and if they added the gore and violence, you know, it'd be an extremely violent game. You're blowing people away with various squid powers. So it's a, it has a market. And we, if we were, you know, third grade would play the shit out of it. Absolutely. I'm glad I had Goldeneye is all I'm going to say in response to that. I'm glad I had Goldeneye. Yeah, I bet they would think Goldeneye is hideous and old and clunky. And Splatoon does play well, you know, from everything I've seen. You know, three is I very, very I feel popular. like if you're a kid right now, and I don't have kids, so I, this is me assuming. I'm assuming if you're a kid right now. All right, Kyle, imagine you're a kid. You're at mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. The kids with overprotective parents are playing Splatoon, and the normal kids are all enjoying Fortnite. Probably. <laughs> I would be playing Splatoon. And I would be <laughs> I would happy for its, for its existence. <laughs> like, you know, I'm just happy that they're supplying the market of People who want to still shoot things and run around without, you know, going straight to Fortnite, which is 
you know, Fortnite is this colossal mega corp kind of like speaking of cyberpunk, you know, like Fortnite has some serious ready player one vibes with all the Gokus flying around and whatnot. I, I mean, a lot of this stuff just isn't for me, right? Like I've never played a Fire Emblem and from the outside, it's very easy to poke fun at it because, you know, the second you fire up the trailer, it's like coming soon, the 30th edition of Fire Emblem. I want to kill God so violence dies forever. He was a dragon and he was born of this world. And you're just like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and the, there's a character with half blue and half red hair and the Fire Emblem engages half blue and half red. You're like, okay, you know, maybe I'm just aged out of this. But there's a lot of nostalgia here. Like I, I did enjoy well enough um, Octopath Traveler. Uh, I just was frustrated by the story switch arounds and not going deep enough on the one character I liked. Uh, so I, I I know if I gave Fire Emblem the chance, I'd probably dig it. But the way they market it, I think, is steeped in nostalgia. And therefore, I have no nostalgia for this type of market. Same with the Final Fantasy 15. 16? Where are we at now? 16 trailer? The new one coming out that's yeah. all about primals? Yeah. That's it, 16. It's cut up in a way that makes me go... Like now I'm on the inside. I like Final Fantasy 14. I see all the primals like, oh, badass, like high graphics, cool primal fights. But looking at and seeing the no, I will not abandon my kingdom to the evil. And you're like, wait, what's happening? What's well, going I think on? If you're a known quantity, like most things do that. I mean, good God, what was, what Halo was it? There was, it was four where they just showed a planet and a logo. Like when they originally announced, like, what do you get? Like when you're known quantity, you're going to play on that. Absolutely. And Nintendo Direct is deeply, deeply this. You know, they are marketing to people who are invested and the console is not anything but that console, right? Like Xbox, PlayStation, like, you know, you got Blu-rays and movies. And there's this kind of, it's a, it's a family home entertainment system. Like Switches are definitely in my book, more like the, here you go, kid. Or here you go, person on the couch. Here you go, person on the plane. There is a game I'm really excited about here. I do want to play It Takes Two at some point. That That is coming to Switch, and I think that'd be a really good uh, game there. But they announced a new Fatal Frame. Oh, and we love Fatal Frames in this house. Big fan big, of the big, Fatal Frame. Big, big Fatal Frame, huh? I, I'm, I've I'm never, being dead serious. I really like I've Fatal never frames. played a Fatal Frame. They look too scary. <laughs> they are, dude. Like, they do some subtle subtle stuff. I, like uh, I, I love horror. Um is a big thing that Katie and I bonded over when we started dating. She was a big horror fan and I wasn't. Um, and, and she really got me into it, but I, I really struggle with horror video games. Uh, I can't do it when I'm in control. I don't have fun. I just, I just sweat and yell. They're subtle. Like that's the fun part. Like you'll walk by a curtain and there's just like two gray little feet hanging out under it. And as you get close, they skitter off like no jump scare. I just, I can't do that. Just nope. be, you know, oh, oh no, oh. he's too tall. Oh no, he's crawling on the ceiling. Like it's such simple crap, you know, it's, it's so it's so basic that our brains go, you shouldn't be on the ceiling. What's wrong with you? Your mouth is too long. No, <laughs> but uh, it, it's a much beloved franchise in this house. I love watching Kristen play. I don't play them, by the way. Kristen plays fewer <laughs> than I watch. So, you know, I'm cheating a little bit in that way, but it's, I'm just really happy to have another one. They're really fun. Yeah, yeah. I I still want to go back and finish RE7. I got really far into it and then got too spooked one night and never went back to it. But uh I can't I can't do it. I can't do horror games, man. They scare it's, it's it's a bridge too far. It's a bridge too far. I, give me give me all your horror movies. Doesn't matter. What did we watch recently? Watch something recently. Shit. I, I digress. I digress. Last last couple of years has been making it through the A24 back catalog of horror movies, but A24 the witch the black coat's daughter is that like a uh, production company like yeah a24 they oh. made the that was that's the witch that's an a24 horror oh. film oh huh. they're more artsy lower budget okay you know like art house horror films sure. chat's asking if i like the camera yeah Autor I love, horror i love the idea of taking pictures of ghosts and making them go away that way i think it's fabulous Mm. It's, a, it's a great gimmick you know restricting your field of view is a great horror mechanic i again Kristen loves uh outlast series that's when i i kind of watch through my fingers like I just, i'm just Oof. And there's also a lot yeah, of like you know that... you're, you're gonna get your limbs cut off kind of stuff in that 
to put it yeah. to put it up. Chat chat right now is positively vibrating with make Garrett play horror games on stream right now. It's a popular uh, thing, you know. I, yeah. I honestly don't know how Markiplier does it, like day in day I out. I could barely fires up horror yeah. fine games. I could barely watch the PT playthrough. I 100% could not play through PT myself. No, that game's too much. You're talking about the demo thing that never became it's just a real a demo. game. There was, yeah. yeah, they never be nothing ever became of it. That was during the Kojima uh, uh, Konami breakdown. Way too much. Uh, Baby yeah. in the sink and lady following you around. Like no, no, that's there's got to be some plot, some advancement, some. I mean, even like you know, Amnesia was fun. Uh, Soma, Soma was way too heady. Like they had a really, really good game mechanic, but they kind of just went deep psychological sci-fi at the end and you're kind of like well you know you, you got the original um rounded the original bioshock that's about as scary as i find fun i like i like japanese horror because it's often grounded in a very particular rule base and that's why i like the conjuring as well like for the most part i'm not gonna Ooh. build my house on top of a well so i'm safe <laughs> a lot of American horror is, is, you know, psycho killer, you know, running and catching. And that's very popular, of course. But oftentimes the ghost movies don't have functional rule sets. But Fatal Frame has very real rules. Like you can sleep at the end of the night because you took the pictures of the ghost and you know they died in the lake. And that's why they haunt the lake. Like, OK, so just don't hang out near any lakes. Like, I'll be fine. I don't live by a lake. <laughs> that's not my house. I'm OK. It doesn't yeah. invade my personal space. Like, I tried watching Ringu, and that scared the shit out of me. Like, Japanese horror gets me more than American horror. Yeah, The Grudge was not fun. I do not. Yeah, The Grudge scares the shit out of me. Yeah. I, and also, I don't think it's a particularly good movie, but the jump the jump scares are truly relentless yeah. in that movie. That that bus scene, man. Oh, dude. Stupid bus jump scare. I hate that jump scare. I still think about it, and, and it makes me uneasy. Like, I watched this in my teens. I'm in my 30s now. I still think about the stupid bus jump scare. Yeah coming down the stairs or any of that crap like it woof, like it's it's free there's no warning no, no. <laughs> there is no warning for that jump scare i'm so mad I'm still so mad at the grudge it's not even a good movie <laughs> but the jump scares are just relentless i'm excited for uh you know nintendo they're getting a bunch of ports some of these i don't know if they're actually you know indie ports or if they're new so like tunic i know is a port and i am that's a game i don't really want to play on my computer i know i could sit down with like the controller and kind of enjoy it that way but i think tunic's gonna be a really really good fit for the switch there's a mm. bunch of farming ones octopath traveler 2 is gonna have to prove itself what do we we got we got story of seasons a wonderful life fay farm this one's kind of insane theater rhythm you ribbon it's a final it's final bar line is what it's called but it's like a guitar hero with final fantasy music Mm. So you sort of press the buttons in time and your little characters, you know, kind of dance in the background while you do this, this little puzzle. Maybe they play a cutscene from one of the games that you're playing the song from. You know, there's some crazy stuff in here. Uh, Mario Raving Rabbids kind of thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Sign, sign me up for that. I, I think I'm just not a big Nintendo guy anymore. That's fair. Here's, They're not here's the, doing much that I'm interested in. Here's the image I was looking for. So Pokemon, all to the Nintendo Direct, which, you know, as we talked about, isn't the most rocking thing in the world, but 1080 Snowboarding's coming. You got the GoldenEye. Original Mario Party, which is the best one, in my opinion. It's also the one I played the most, but... It's definitely the one I played the most as well, yes. Now, Pokemon this is just Stadium. all nostalgia. Inject it, yeah. inject it straight into my veins. Uh, okay, so Pokemon Stadium, I love, played the crap out of. You can't transfer your Pokemon in this port, which makes it a useless product, in my opinion. Hmm. I mean, I guess you couldn't, right? Because there wouldn't be the attachment to put your Game Boy game. You couldn't there. because Nintendo didn't decide to come up with any way to do that, I guess. I think like, it would I, sell if they tried. Yes, I agree. So my point is, they're not trying. <laughs> like... I don't understand the point of Stadium if you can't transfer your Pokemon. I also don't play a lot of, uh, like, various day life. These, like, RPGs with the heavy RPG elements, uh, as you would know them from old. Oh, Factorio is coming to Switch. That's pretty cool. You got to play that. I need to rope you in for some co-op of That Factorio. seems like a PC game. That seems like a PC game. That's something I want to play on computer. You know, I probably wouldn't like uh, switching that many different tool sets and craftables yeah 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 that doesn't actually sound that fun yeah yeah 
you know, it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm in the, and I know I'm an insane person, but I am in the unpopular camp of, I didn't really care for Breath of the Wild. And that's, that's the tent pole that Nintendo's hanging their hat on is, is we're doing a number two. And I'm like, but I didn't really like the first one. So I'm just feeling the odd man out. I, I'm more excited for 1080 snowboarding than I am for anything else announced here. That's the one where I'm like, I'm just old. And that's fine mm. by me. Like, I'm not going to trash on Zelda because they're still doing the temples and the thing with minimal story. Like, every time they come out of this, I'm like, what, but what's the story? How are you going to intrigue me? It's, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a screw around box. Now you're going to go in there. You're going to shoot the sun. It's going to drop some fire arrows. You take those. You light the, the, you know, pig beast on fire. It runs around. It runs in the hay. The hay catches on fire. Then you lift the hay into the sky. Like, it, it's just there to screw around. Like, when I would get on and ride, what was the pony's name? Eponia? Epona? Epona, yeah. Uh, Epona, I think, Perhaps. is the correct pronunciation. Yeah, it was a voice acted. How was I to know? You know, third uh, grade. Same. Third grade. Same. But I would just get on there and just, like, ride around, you know, and just ride around in circles, enjoy messing around, fire some arrows at some pose that showed up. And there yeah. is a lot of content. You, you give a kid Zelda and say, here you go, like, that'll last them. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. I, I'm, I'm impatiently awaiting them to put out the HD release of Wind Waker because I've still never beaten Wind Waker. So if they put that out, I'm going to buy it immediately. Um, and then I am, I am by nature of us playing through Final Fantasy XIV, I am finally in my old age softening <laughs> on JRPGs and I'm becoming interested in playing them. I've heard a lot of good things uh, about Xeno, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. And I've never looked at Octopath Traveler in my life, but it was, you know, put back on my radar this week because of the sequel on Switch. That game looks beautiful. Um, so I'm kind of interested in both of those. I don't. So, yeah, I don't know what to make of Xenoblade Chronicles because the majority of what I've absorbed from the Internet and like YouTube videos is like gatekeeping. You know, there's a lot there's a lot of heavy, heavy xenoblade chronicle fans that will defend this to the end and people are attempting to make critiques and they are absolutely shot down i've so, heard from multiple people I've, I've heard from multiple people that i i trust their opinions and i tend to to jive with their opinions that uh even if you don't you're not the biggest xenoblade chronicles fan in the world that they think there's enough improvements and nothing ha nothing's happening right in three that even non-fans might might find enjoyment there so that's why I've seen a lot of really positive takes on Xenoblade Chronicles 3 from outlets I wouldn't expect to even be covering this game. So that, that's why it's on my radar. And then you, you, keep, you, you keep mentioning Octopath Traveler that it didn't really land for you, but because of this uh, direct and Octopath Traveler 2, I'm just looking at it. It just looks so pretty, man. I just want to look at this game. I want to get uh, the... What, what, wait, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Hang on. Okay, this is a remastered, but... Tales of Symphonia was really good, as I remember it. You know, it's been a while, but I would be very interested in uh, getting reinvolved. And this had, like, uh, I believe the main character was voiced by the guy who does Robin and Teen Titans in English. Uh, he does everything. He was like stinky in um, Korra when she like went to the spirit world and like talked to the weird Fox beast. Like you'll hear this guy oh, everywhere. Gotcha. He does everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've, I've not, I never played a tales game and now I'm remembering why the, uh, the, the chibi look of the gameplay when like when you're actually in the game controlling your characters, I can't get past that. Okay. All right. All right. Well, so, so I'll let you have that. You let me have Chrono Trigger and all those sorts of things then. I, I mean, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you have whatever you want because cool. it's you and yeah. you can have your opinions. No, I'm just saying, you know, I don't like the DBZ art style and I find it, you know, uninteresting. Oh, okay. So, that's, so I, I didn't really, okay. I didn't think of this as chibi, but it, yeah, I can see it. Uh, for me, they it do looks like, these like you're playing with, uh, with like Fisher Price toys. I don't really make that connection because the little images are, you know, unique faces and when they do the full-blown anime parts those so that's kind of me taking like so i'm trying to is describe how i felt as a younger me here so i'm trying to say is that when i saw a game like this and i saw those awesome cinematics and then it got to the gameplay and they looked chibi i felt like it was false advertising the, oh, the younger me yeah. was very grumpy i wanted games to look a certain way 
I was definitely in the camp of Wind Waker looks too kitty. Where is my Twilight Princess? Now you ask me now, I would much rather play Wind Waker. But I'm I'm trying to take you through my mindset of of the younger me that avoided these games like the plague because I I just didn't like how they looked. I I've, I've always liked it, and I I called it I've called it mental graphics for my own like just identify. I'm sure it has a better word, but. It, it's called the only way to get through a Bethesda game. Well, yeah, sort of. I'm not, no, no, no. I'm, I'm more talking about like Brood War when you see a cinematic of like the Marines and the trenches shooting Zerglings and then you go play the game. Like those are not the same thing. The Marine going, burr, 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 you know, like it's standing completely still. He's not dodging. He's not running for his life probably because I couldn't control him well enough. But you know what I mean? I got better about that as I got older. You take those um, you take it, those nice scenes and you put them on top of the avatar you have in the game and now the game looks better in your mind's eye. I, so I, I think a, I think a disconnect for you and me, if we're, let's get real personal here, mm. is I didn't tabletop growing up. I did not play tabletop. And I got a lot better about what you're describing after I played D&D with you for the first time at the ripe old age of 24. Interesting. Yes, I got a oh. lot better at this. I started enjoying Bethesda games more because I've talked about how I don't really enjoy Bethesda's art direction. I think it's really flat and literal. Um, but, you know, I've, I've since beaten Skyrim, played a good amount of Fallout 3 and 4 and enjoyed it enough. Uh, Fallout's my biggest one where I really don't like the look of the game, but I like the game systems enough and the, and the storytelling. And all of this happened as a result of getting in the tabletop for me. It reminded me as a young adult to, oh yeah, you can still, you can still get into it. You can still use your freaking imagination. So Tales of Symphonia, I actually never beat because I got into Grandia 2 right after that. And I thought Grandia 2 was way more my jam. It's a darker story, but Tales of Symphonia at the time, I can't speak to now, had English voice actors that I was familiar with and I really liked, like the Robin guy. Uh, again, he's got a name. I just don't remember it. Uh, and that, that really worked for me. I'm sure Japanese is way better, as it is in the majority of cases for these games. Mm. You know, oftentimes you could say, you know, it's cringy. It's, there's no voice direction. They don't know what they're talking about when they're making a fantasy word. The pronunciation keeps changing based on which character's saying because they're not in the same studio, right? Like, there, there, are, there are issues <laughs> that can absolutely ride that I do not remember as a child. But Grandia 2 and uh, Skies of Arcadia. Oh, Skies of Arcadia was great. My college roommate was obsessed with that game. And I just thought it was the dumbest looking thing I'd ever seen. It, it was good. It, it, I'm admitted. I'm, I'm admitting to my shallowness. This is I'm not trying to dunk. I'm trying to explain where my head was in my younger years. My roommate was obsessed with Skies of Arcadia, like properly obsessed. I'm sure if we called him up right now, he could probably talk to us for three hours about that game with no warning. Um, and I was just like, I didn't get it. It just, I didn't get it. but I was really in the wow at the time. I was playing rock band. I was doing Halo multiplayer a lot. I was in a completely different headspace. As I remember it, Skies of Arcadia was really well balanced in that if you did a, a normal run and you got enough XP along the way, you would hit the bosses and be just fine. And I felt that way about Final Fantasy X as well. I did not feel that way about, as I remember it, Tales of Symphonia. I remember a bit more grinding and having to like get mm. to a boss and being like, oh no, I'm awful. Uh, Skies of Arcadia was really good about that. I think Grandia was okay as well. Uh, more so I'm bringing this up because I do not know how much these games will respect your time nowadays. That's the main complaint I hear. Well, I should say that's the main complaint I've latched onto about Dragon Quest and some of the newer ones is that the game doesn't really respect your time. And oftentimes you'll hit bosses and be like, hey, did you skip stuff? Oh, back back to the dungeon. Yeah, what I'm looking for, and I'm really not because I don't have time because of school, but but I'm feeling in the mood for turn-based right now. Like, I'd love to have a turn-based game that I could, like, lay down in the evening with and, and knock a couple hours out of. And, but I don't, I don't want to grind. <laughs> so, like, I'm yeah. looking, I'm like, maybe I'll go back to an old Final Fantasy, but I assume there's there's going to be grinding there. So, that's that's kind of where I'm mulling around in my mind. So, and I, I actually didn't look into the Zelda, but it looks extremely general, right? There's a threat. It's, it's just, it's on just an ancient more, wall. it's more Breath of the Wild. Yeah. We, we jump from a thing and we skydive and Link's there and he runs and there's probably a, a bar. I'm curious to see how this game goes in a post Genshin Impact world because Genshin Impact really kind of continued the Breath of the Wild feel for many. 
I mm. think has eaten up a lot of that gameplay time. I, I, I listen, I'm, I, I want to be very clear that I, I am aware that I am in the minority, but not particularly loving breath of the wild. Like this game's going to sell gangbusters. It's going to be a raging freaking success. Um, and a lot of people are, I know are stoked that they're coming out with a direct sequel. It's just not for me. How are you feeling it's about Ubisoft? Me. Because they had a big thing this week. There's a little, there's a glimmer of hope there for me that they're talking about that the next big Assassin's Creed that they announced, what's it called? Uh, Mirage? Mirage, yes. They're vaguely talking about it being more return to form, like more traditional Assassin's Creed gameplay instead of the RPG focus games. Because I have, I've fallen off. I don't like the, the RPG change that started with the, the Greco Roma one they did. I'm pretty sure it started in two where you had to like manage Ezio's manner and like get. No, no, no. They straight up cha- completely changed how combat happens. They, w- oh. I think it was either the Egypt one or the, the, the Roman one. They changed to Dark Souls, like dual trigger combat. And once they did that, I was out. Whoa. I don't like it. Wait, this isn't a like counter based Batman Ark Asylum game anymore? I thought. No, hasn't been for more than a decade. Oh. I was so lost in two and like the. Egypt. Okay, Origins. So Origins was the first one that did this. Oh, I didn't. And realize. it became a very long, like deep RPG game. It, re- they review very well. I have a lot of friends. They freaking love them. Like mm. I've, I know a lot of people that d- wouldn't touch Assassin's Creed with a ten foot pole. And when they made the big change that they did with Origins, suddenly they were all about them. I was the other way. I liked Assassin's Creed as kind of an action game. And when they went to this deeper, you know, dual trigger RPG action combat i was out um i tried the last one the viking one because just people would not shut up about how awesome it was i i I really couldn't stand it um i bought it i'm glad i bought it on sale because i played about three hours and i haven't touched it since i had no idea yeah man no no it's it's just not my jam whereas before i was a really big assassin's creed fan i the the first one i just thought was cool even though it was i agreed with a lot of people that said the first one was extremely repetitive, which it was, but I liked the core gameplay loop. Right. So, um, right. It, it was fun, you yeah. know, squirreling your way across the city and finding a haystack or finding something to hide in. Like it was just, it was a lot of fun and trying to do it perfectly to assassinate the right person. I enjoyed the puzzle of it. And plus I, I like the historical cities. So as we got further away from history, I actually found it less interesting. And it, mainly I heard they never addressed the real world stuff. They never, yeah, not in the way I wanted story, them. Made it satisfying. To. That was the other thing about Assassin's Creed. Is I was weirdly into the narrative. I thought they had a cool thing going on with making these historical games that still had a meta present day narrative, and I really liked it. And I liked the main character, and I liked the side characters, and I liked the back and forth. And I think we've even talked about it on this show before. That I was really looking forward to getting to. I assumed Assassin's Creed Three, and it was just going to be a modern day game. That yeah. the main character was going to have learned everything he had to learn. And now we're like almost a cyberpunk style game, you know, re- you know, near, near future style stuff. And we didn't get that. We got a tiny little bit. There's little moments in three where you play uh, in the, in the present day setting, but we never got that. So I want that yeah, Matrix uh, Neo uh, moment where like everything he learned inside the an- anima, right? It was called the anima. Um, was it the anima? I think it was the anima. It, that he would somehow, you know, have those powers in real life and you would now be real time, you know, Cyber Animus. Ninjas. Thank you. Thank you. Animus. Yeah, Animus. Anima is uh, the crap they force you to collect in World of Warcraft. Yes, World of Warcraft um, currency. Yes. Uh, so you did do that a little bit in three, but it was a minor note. It was like a side, well, not a side mission, but it was like a mini mission where you play as uh, the main character. Well, and even two, we were off the deep end. That's we like on the run, like having to use like rogue Animus machines. And, like, yeah, they had one in like a van or whatever. Yeah. I liked it. It was fine. I thought they did a decent job with the cast of characters. Like it felt like, uh, kind of felt like premier television. Like it was Very. not cheesy enough to be CW, but enough craft in the characters to feel like it, maybe it was, you know, uh, like an HBO show or something. Like I really liked it. And, and they just got, they got away from it. I think they kind of jumped the shark with the ending brotherhood and black flag will forever be my favorite Assassin's Creed so games. Tell me about black flag then. Cause that one is often st- spoke with reverence. It had the RPG elements though. It was still this dark souls no. kind of combat. No, no, well, I, I don't was, know my order was... of Assassin's Creed's then black flag was before origins. So origins is where they went to a, a my first dark souls experience. Gotcha. And 
Uh, I think Black Flag was the last one with OG combat. There, no, no, that's not true. No, there's a couple after that that I kind of fell off, but they were still dead. The one in France, and then they had the one in London, and those both had kind of traditional Assassin's Creed combat as well. I did not play oh. those. Um, but Black Flag, it it was such a pirate game first and an Assassin's Creed game second, and they just made they they did accidentally made like the best pirate game ever made. I know I'm catching it's, up on this, and I'm sorry I'm moving at a snail's pace, but you you actually, like, in an Assassin's Creed, locked on to somebody and slowly rotated around them for extended fights. You're talking about the RPG? Yeah. Uh, kind of, yeah. Why? What? That's a horrible... Like, what? <laughs> Just, that's not what I... I agree. I, it made me feel clunky and no. not like a, a master murderer, which is what the action yeah. combat and all the other games kind of accomplish. That's why I don't... I don't want to buy tacos from McDonald's. Like that's not what I'm here for. <laughs> that's really weird. So you, the, the, here's the thing though. A lot of people love them. Like you might, you might be surprised. Maybe I do like Dark Souls and have a good time. I do like Dark Souls a lot. So maybe yeah, I, maybe I would, but it is more simplified than that, but a lot more involved than original Assassin's Creed combat. Oh man. But the whole dream, at least as I, you know, picture Assassin's Creed, the product is, down the streets through the market jump over the market and then a little, yes. little wrist blade in the in the dude's ear and then you run off and that's that's what i'm looking for i want i want to sneak badly like the stealth was always kind of bad but that's yep. why i'm kind of excited about mirage because it looks like we're going back to that kind of like crusade byzantium i don't know it's what the, the first time we're is. it's the first time we're heading back to the middle east since yeah one i think and going through those ancient streets and feeling like there's some historical significance to it like you know there, there's there's certain locations that of course laid out. i don't know if they're accurate like you know spider-man do in new york i don't know if it's laid out with any sort of reverence to the actual place uh but that, that feeling i really liked of going through the streets and being the stealth figure and listening to some guy be a horrible person it's like it's jo it's getting me up like it's like oh this dude's so bad oh i i can't wait to kill him when he gets alone like oh i'm gonna go in the rafters or maybe i'll take one of the other three prescribed exactly this path and it's organic okay, experience but actually it's just three options all the same like you know that's why i didn't like uh deus ex i, I don't want to poke that hornet's nest right now i always so a little bit of me and i don't play a ton of these games i've played enough of them to you know have a have a taste for these games i always thought assassin's creed should have went further down the hitman rabbit hole and they never really did. You mean like the sort of like pseudo serious, but comedy kind of feel of Hitman? Make your missions a little more puzzle based, which is a lot of different ways you can accomplish the same objective. I think they, I mean, granted, uh, all puzzles were solved by climbing. So maybe you're talking about different game mechanics than just. Yeah. The, well, if we're, if we're, if we're looking at the history of the, the path that went down, Assassin's Creed made a serious change at some point. And so if we're, living in a world where it can just decide I'm a different genre of game now. Like, why not look at other things that I think to me speaks more to what, like the heart of what Assassin's Creed is. Cause I don't think that's an RPG experience, even though it seems like they made really good games that I don't particularly like. We're, we're talking my taste here. We're not, I don't think sure. it's objectively bad. Sure. Well, you, um, you, you listen to this podcast, you're going to get, you know, I, I appreciate you saying it's your opinion, but you know, also, you know, it's, it's your opinion. It's the show, right? Bring it on. Yeah. Yeah. I, so th anyway, this this is the thing I'm the most excited about. Yeah, it looks Assassin's like a return Mirage, to form. Yeah, because if we're going back to action-based combat, sign me up. I, I would I would kill for a new action-based combat, Assassin's Creed. And the fact that we're also going back to the Middle East, hell yes. I miss, I'm nostalgic for Assassin's Creed, which is something I never thought I'd experience. Oh, uh, and Demon here in the chat uh, brings up a great point. If they remove the RPG elements, how will they sell skips? And, you know, there that is true. That is true. Like, we... We went through a time I've period never, where I've never given Ubisoft extra money beyond just buying the game. I realize that they, they have uh, some pretty predatory practices. I just don't engage them. I also haven't played an Assassin's I haven't you know, played an Assassin's Creed game in like a decade. So. I, I found zero joy in Assassin's Creed's to like manner management. So I'd never even beat it. I love that first one. I thought it was really stellar. But again, those elements, you know, became fleshed out in Batman Arkham games and then The Witcher it's kind of more of like a Witcher 3, a hybrid of Dark Souls and Assassin's Creed. It's like lock-on, but it's kind of counter-based. And I think it works really good in a slick rogue character that does one little stab and moves on. I think it became laborious in Batman games where you were punching and kicking the same guy 20 times 
in the gut before he always fell down and it was always his head was the problem i uh i really like that combat too though so we're you're describing something that i love i love the I, all those arkham games i don't care the good ones the bad ones i'll play them all Do you, this new one coming out uh gotham knights which is made by the team i think people consider making the not so great arkham games i'm gonna still play that game a bunch of b-lists i have no interest <laughs> <laughs> I love Nightwing. What's wrong with you? Nightwing's the best. What? Nightwing is like grown up, pissed off Robin, right? <laughs> grown up, original Robin. Right. But didn't he, you know, get super dead like five times now? It depends on what, what reality right. we're talking I, I, about. I, I find comics confusing in that way. But yeah, I, I get you got to restart <laughs> the property. And, in and... the universes where Robin survives, he eventually becomes Nightwing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'd like. You're thinking little... of the second Robin, who and most of them become Red Hood, who is also in this. He doesn't die; yes. he's horribly maimed, and turns to a life of violence. Good, joyous, jo good, good yes. times. Good times will be had in that game. Uh, do you know anything about Skull and Bones? Because I've heard a lot of people <laughs> super stoked about it, and I know nothing. How long are we gonna be? Here? <laughs> what? I'm curious. <laughs> oh, the, the, it's, I'm laughing because this is such a loaded topic for me. Because this, they teased this after Black Flag. That's how long ago oh. Skull and Bones was teased. A year or two after Black Flag. They showed a trailer and everyone's like, holy shit, they're just going to drop Assassin's Creed. They're going to take what they learned from Black Flag and they're just going to go hard on a pirate game. And I th I was so hyped for this game, dude. And there's no universe where it lives up to any expectations. It's been it has been long, over man. 10 years. It's oh, been over wow. 10 years. Yeah. It's ridiculous. There's just, I, I am, I'm not even, it's going to come. This is one of those things where I'm like, I refuse to look into this ahead of time. If it comes out and it's a surprise and it doesn't suck, cool. But I am fully bracing for this for this game to be a, a nightmare. I they they showed a trailer of like the customization, which seems very bare bones. Like there's very little about your ship that's changing. But outside what about of the skulls? Are the skulls bare as in addition to the bones? It, it, there's like prescribed slots. You know what I mean? Like your your mast. Your the sails there's not like there's not like a full-blown ship creator or anything so i'm just wondering why i've heard so much about this but i think i just heard why is because it happened at the end of black flag people were really stoked on it we've had sea of thieves since then which kind of you know stoked that fire satisfied the urge uh, i think that'd be a really fun co-op game as like a project game oh chat room is not for because i i mean it i haven't looked into this because i think it's gonna suck chat room's informing me there's there's no hand-to-hand -hand combat there's no walking around it's just boat combat nothing else that sounds awful to me oh i'm completely uninterested how would i do that from oh well it looks like you get a some, is it fantasy looks like there's some sort of lemur on the boat <laughs> see that there's some sort of lemur it's probably, it's probably the captain's pet yeah but you know so a, they can sell you that in a loot box or something it's a, it's a very fantasy looking beast in a loot box sure it's, it's just a lemur man i don't know how you uh, maybe i don't know i've seen a lot of steam games that are like be the pirates and you know it's always like 15 bucks which i'm, I'm not saying like the price determines quality sometimes but you go ooh, <laughs> 15 bucks this can't be that deep and it's a top down control your ship i don't know how i'm not interested in those kind of games first of all uh i don't know how you do this from like the captain's seat and make it interesting without that tactical top down view oh so, you should go play black flag because they did it they figured it out but that that's hand-to-hand -hand combat you're like running around your ship no no you, no. you there's also ship combat you 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 jump on the ship you go to the captain's wheel your character locks in place and suddenly you have boat view and you can broadside other galleons it's wonderful it's fluid it's still to this day one of my favorite action games ever and this looks like an atrocity by comparison <laughs> well but the, at the end there's the satisfaction of like messing up the boat and then jumping over right and doing hand-to-hand -hand combat yeah yes which uh the this will not right. I, again i wasn't I didn't look into this. I should have warned you ahead of time that I think this is going to be a nightmare and I have actively avoided all information I can. About gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you're not the one to ask, yeah. but also I am now aware that this is a, a deeply troubled game. Perhaps. Where I want a sequel to Black Flag, I am instead getting an, a, a multiplayer only, it looks like, ship combat game, which mm. makes me sad. Mm. Makes me sad. Yeah. It Play sounds like Black it'll Flag. lack organic moments outside of ship combat and that's i what think CFD everyone so well 
Kyle, you know how we say people should vote with their wallet? You know, that's, when I say we, I mean colloquially we, like it, it, that's the popular thing to say, vote with your wallet. Yeah. I don't want to tell you to not buy Skull and Bones. I would rather on the day that Skull and Bones comes out, everyone go and buy an extra copy of Black Flag. <laughs> I want Black Flag to chart the day that Skull and Bones comes out so right. that we send a very clear message to Ubisoft that nobody wants this. They want Black Flag 2. Yes. They that, want we're Black not Flag boycotting as Ubisoft. As my, as, they want that as badly as my wife wants a 12-foot skeleton from Home Depot. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't aware. Yeah, you 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 didn't know you were you were you were diving into a, no, a I, deep, painful no subject. I, I for didn't me. realize that skull and bones had hurt you, but yeah, you know, I'm glad it's out in the open. Yes, something that isn't even out yet has has really, really just dude. We, me we spent the first what 30 minutes of the show talking about how you know we're we're bummed on cyberpunk, right? Like you know these, these things we take. But we're not though. We're, there's hope for cyberpunk. There is hope. I mean, you know, there the, is hope. The anime is fantastic, and I didn't hate uh, what little I played of it last night. It's very pretty, Kyle. It's very pretty. Anywho, you want to take a quick break? Let's do that. All right. Uh, what are we threatening this week if people don't go to supportourbromance.com, Kyle? What are we doing? Uh, we will uh, add we... unnecessary RPG elements and loot boxes. But have we done loot boxes? So unnecessary RPG elements is our threat this week. Our next episode will be nothing but mediocre boat combat if you do not go to supportourbromance.com and uh, take a look at our Patreon. That's where that... that URL will take you. Um, got some nice perks over there for you. You get access to our members only channels and uh, an ad free version of the show. You won't hear this. You won't hear this. Although maybe, I don't know, maybe you find this amusing, which you could just continue listening to the public could. version of the show. Yeah, if you the, find these promos amusing. Sure. If you, if you like, if you like it, but if you don't yeah. want to hear this for any reason, and you would like to catch some of those bonus episodes, we do like our little spoiler shows. You can do that at support our Yes, indeed. So we thank you for that. Go check it out. Go check it out. Patreon support of bromance.com. Now let's uh, let's talk about what we've been playing. Oh. I already talked about cyberpunk. I'm not really going to say anything more there. Um, I like it enough to keep playing it. It's so pretty, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I got a 4K OLED TV early this year. It's so pretty. I guess I'm going to say more about it. It's very pretty. Have you messed with refresh rates? Are you into that whole refresh rate thing? Well, that's what I like about the Xbox and my TV is it just works. Okay. My television is capable of 120 hertz. It's capable of 4K. It's capable of high dynamic range. And the Xbox takes I advantage of all of that. Yeah. All of it. All of it just says all of it. And it just works. And it's uh, it's lovely. Yeah. On, on top of my computer upgrades that I'm needing and researching, I was also made aware by uh, Bo Schwartz this week about the beauty of refresh rates. And I have no idea like what monitor I have, what the refresh rate is. Probably not great. If it's uh, if it if it's if you didn't really do any research and you just kind of bought like the best deal you found, it's probably 60 hertz. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So maybe maybe I need an upgrade in that direction as well to enjoy these. Yeah. I games. got years during the first lockdown. And when I was d building, I got a TCL. I got a killer deal on a TCL. Um, it's not an OLED. It's your standard like LED television or LCD, whatever, whatever a standard TV is in terms of the display. But um, every once in a while, I still see them going up on on sale. Uh, TCL TVs that that, oh. that support 120 hertz. Because um, I wanted, to, uh, if I was gonna get a dedicated TV for my chair for for Gran Turismo. I wanted to find a 120 hertz TV. Hmm. I'm not familiar with TCL. I know Samsung. I know the little bird. Um, I think this is little an bird. A. What's it's, the little bird? Like the two little birds chilling in the bottom, like little, little rainbow birds. Little, I've literally, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. They had a balloon at the balloon fiesta that was shaped like them back in the day. View People Sonic. Saying it's View Sonic. Yeah, it's View Sonic. Oh, I've never heard of that brand. Yeah, they, they had a full-blown hot air balloon at the Albuquerque, New Mexico balloon fiesta growing up. So I was like, oh, they must be a reputable brand. So I bought one of those, you know, like they, they, uh, these, these are the marketings I fall for. My, yeah, the, 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 the nice living room TV is an LG, is an LG OLED and it's very nice, but it was also not particularly cheap. I also have, uh, uh, is this an A, A-O-C? I actually don't, it's like an upside down V. There's no line on the A. On my second monitor here. Oh, AOC. I've seen AOC monitors. Okay. What's that over yeah, there? Yeah, I'm aware. I'm, I'm aware of that one. That's a ViewSonic over there. Okay. 
I, I'm a mess. I've got no brand loyalty in this room. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't really care. I know I have a, a Toshiba that is going on like 15 years old, and it still works like a charm. So shout out to Toshiba, I guess. But no, I don't really care about brands. I just kind of the, the the LG, the big living room TV. That's the only time in my entire life I've really paid attention to what I was buying. Even even the, the you know the, the the budget TCL I got from my sim rig. The only thing I was looking for was refresh rate. Nothing else mattered hmm. to me. I just wanted to make sure it had at least 120 hertz. I honestly didn't know this was the thing that people cared yeah. about. It's buttery smooth, man. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. And like you can imagine playing a racing game. It's it's very nice. Well, this is a nice dance around what I really want to hear about this week. How was Dreamlight? You said you were going to do it. You said you, said you were going to get did. in there. I did. I spent, uh, I think, Tuesday night. I just cozy. I put myself under a blanket. Katie was chilling. All the dogs came up. We just laid down and we vibed out with Disney Dreamlight Valley. And I don't, I don't really like it. <laughs> it has fallen off of the steam. I don't particularly like this game. There are... To assess it on a mechanical level, it's pretty damn good. Uh, it is it is Animal Crossing as shit. It is Disney does Animal Crossing. Um, and in that way, it's not nearly as like day gated, if that makes sense. I don't know. Have you ever played Animal Crossing? No, no. But I've okay, I've, Katie, Katie, th we are an Animal Crossing household. Katie loves those games. I enjoy them. Uh, we played quite a bit of uh, multiple Animal Crossings across multiple nintendo handhelds and um so we like them but a lot of your progression in that game is gated from like day to day there's things you can only do so many things in a day in animal crossing and you, then you kind of gotta like wait okay and disney dreamlight valley doesn't have as much of that it has a little bit of it but it's not as heavy-handed as uh as animal crossing that way at least in my this is like a one i played it for one day review of dreamlight valley um so that's that's what I would say is like if 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 that's if I think if you if Disney does Animal Crossing sounds interesting to you I think you're gonna really enjoy this game. What about Stardew Valley? I played that one. Quite this isn't really like Stardew really at all in my opinion. I guess I guess you could say it's adjacent, but I mean I would you know I would say it in the same way that Animal Crossing is adjacent to Stardew Valley. Hmm. Okay. Okay. It's falling off of steam. Seems the buzz might be dying down it's yeah it's so sterile ah <laughs> like, okay it it's like I, it's like you you know this you go into a hotel room and you can smell the lysol yeah that's kind of how this feels in a presentation like the the user interface is cold and uncaring it's <laughs> they just went with a, a standard sans serif like nothing's themed on the ui it's like the most basic interface and it's just it's just kind of weird hmm. um it, yeah cold and uncaring is the way i would do in in the way like for for mechanically where i think it is better than animal crossing it loses all of it in its charm and warmth so yeah okay also there's like no voice acting so you just hear the same like click line hmm. on merlin like the World of Warcraft again. The World of Warcraft does that. World of Warcraft has more varied click, like like poke voice lines. Greetings. Than Dream, than yeah, than than Dreamlight friend. Valley. Wow, yeah. even World of Warcraft's minute amount of options. Yes. Okay. All right. I think yeah. I, I think I got the review I wanted. I will be passing. Yeah. yeah I guess I was also hoping for more uh, non-classic Disney tie-ins, and if there are any, they come way too late. Like it just starts like, "Do you like Mickey, Merlin, and Goofy?" I like I'm Merlin. Like, not not really that much. Uh, I mean, enough, but like, I like Goofy enough, I guess. But it's not my favorite. Mm. And uh, yeah, no. I was I was thinking this would be Kingdom Hearts without the Final Fantasy tie-in. And it's more just like, what if all the IP at Disney wasn't there anymore and all you were left with was the strictly Disney content of it? 
it sounds like from the outside when Cartoon Network would run those ads, like go to ne cartoonnetwork.com. We got Adventure Time, the game. We got you. You know, you can play as the Powerpuff Girls, and you go, and it's this horrible jump platformer thing, half baked. It's, it's a well made game, I guess, in that way. Like I, I think it lacks polish, but in terms of like raw game systems, it's it's a relatively deep, you know, village builder. It's it's a deep if you want a, a deep village builder experience and you're you're done with your stardews and you're done with your Animal Crossings, I think this will totally scratch that itch for you. Um, I, it lost me at its presentation. I think it's just a little um, it's a little mid, as the kids would say. Oh, right, I've heard that one. I don't know exactly yeah. what it means. I think that's good. Is it mid means good? Like middle of the road. Oh, is that? Oh, huh. I don't know. Like basic standard yeah. average maybe the kids are using it wrong i don't know I don't, I, I, well i oh, excuse me I, I'll, I'll speed through uh mine real quick because it's not really a recommendation to you i just love that it was on sale this week i played orcs must die three i love the original so so much it's a it's like a tower defense third person shooter where probably the third person shooter part is a little more important than the actual like turrets and stuff so if you go into it wanting a tower defense you'll be sorely disappointed by how much work you have to do on the shooter side of things. But I was in the mood for it. A sale happened at the exact right time. It's more of the same. Uh, the story's always been bad. There shouldn't be a story in this. They like, there's voices talking whenever you start a level and the original was bad, second one's bad, third one's bad. Uh, two and three had like heavy co-op mechanics that are perfectly dodgeable to play by yourself. But you can definitely feel that the game's always being like, hey, you should be playing co-op, hey, you should be playing co-op. I don't mind though, because it just means more paths to defend, so. No problem done there. Sounds like, uh, reminds me of Horde Mode from Gears of War. Did yeah. you ever play that? I, I never played that, but I've seen people, uh, particularly, I think it's the zombie mode in Call of Duty, like go around with the little like window extensions and like put them down and like yep. now you block the window yep. and yeah, it, it's like that. Not first person, yeah. third person. So, um, the traps can be a little more intricate and animated because it is zoomed out you don't have to worry about it being in your face and blocking your field of view but a really really cute game i i enjoy them a lot uh the very positive on steam is correct like there's issues and i do not like i do not like weird joke storylines like magicka in the past like just stop oh i liked magicka stop, stop the storylines stop the weird i enjoyed magicka for me it's it's, it's it's i don't mean to uh, uh dump on borderlands again but i've never found borderlands funny yeah uh, that, that, there's, there's times where it can be slightly amusing, but you know, Borderlands has that edginess to it that's trying to pull off at the same time. It doesn't quite uh, land you know, like a, a South Park game might. But I like, uh, you know, I like the Orcs Must Die three, and it was worth. Game. Otherwise, I was getting involved in Doma Restoration this week in Final Fantasy fourteen, which is longish to fire up. That's a bold decision. Well, I'm I'm all up on company seals. Like I, I don't need any more of that currency. Every time I send my squadrons on missions, I've still got too many, and I don't need any more glamour prisms. And I've already bought all the decorations I need, so I didn't know what to do with my spare items. Which you keep running out of the instances, so you don't get any spare items. So I get all the spare items. So I have all these spare items. Well, the last two weeks I have forgotten to clear my inventory, and I'm just like I've got everything I want with company seals. At this point, it is just there when I run out of glam prisms. That's all I do with my company seals. So the last two weeks i'm like get me out of this instance i have no room for the stuff that's a, gonna a try to make its way into my bags it's it's cute it, it's a cute little storyline you basically get to find out what happened to the doman peoples who uh left and part of that like a realm reborn poor stuff uh, where you first met yagiri and stuff like that you, you know she had like her other travelers maybe assistants i'm not really sure what you know the hierarchy was there but you get to kind of like meet those people again and help restore Doma. Basically, I wanted to do it so I could have another place to put all these crazy items. So I got deep into that system, which had facilitated the need for going in the Discord, asking questions and looking up guides. So I can't tell you what exactly I get out of it yet, but it is a deep system, which will hopefully take my spare items while I'm leveling other jobs. I was about to say, I was like, it's a bold decision knowing how many jobs we both still need to level for roll quests. Yes, and you're going to have a lot of spare items, and Doma could use them. I don't know why, but they want them. <laughs> and they might give me points or something on the other side. 
I've, I've yet to figure out why I need a ridiculous amount of gill, but I just, I just want gill. So I just been selling things. Yeah, fantasy, you know, it's, it's living your fantasy, being rich, you know, you want to buy, buy stuff. Maybe I don't, <laughs> I don't have a good sense of like how much the money means. Um, and I, I don't know actually if it's been pretty linear, like world of Warcraft, you'd go expansion to expansion. Like I remember in BFA and they're like, here's the, the Brontosaurus, which I guess isn't a real, well, it's a fancy game. We can say Brontosaurus. I know it's not a real dinosaur, uh, but you know, it, it was like millions, millions of gold. And I just had no frame of reference for what a gold was worth anymore after so many expansions. So I don't know if Gil stays more standardized how the economy is over in Final Fantasy 14. Hmm. I just know there's going to be a point where one day I just want to go buy something and I don't want to have to ask if I have enough gill to get it. That's that's what's going to happen. I don't know when that day will come, but you're damn sure I'm going to keep it to myself because I don't want to feel guilty when someone gifts it to me. Otherwise, our, it was all works must die. It was chill. Our community is too kind. By the way, uh, we, we I think we have an Endwalker code to find a home for because. Oh, right. Yeah, we should do that. Let's. Uh, we need to we need to figure out how we're doing that. We, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just bringing it up kind of as a joke is why you're why I'm feeling a little guilty right now. People are being too kind and we have ended up with more than one Endwalker code. I was sent a complete edition code as well. So we've got we've got some stuff to give away. Anybody who's interested in Final Fantasy, we'll we'll do something soon. Do something soon yeah, about no. that. Probably announce it on a stream or a video somewhere. Yeah. Where are YouTubers now? We could announce it on a video. We could. Yeah. We've been doing it for a year and I still don't think of ourselves as YouTubers. Hmm. Gonna be a while. Gonna be a while. Anywho. Glad to, glad to see you're finding some fun, man. Orcs Must Die 3 looks like it'd be fun co-op. It is. It is good. The second one was really, really solid. Um, they don't, they don't do a good job forcing you guys together more often the maps are like you take left side i'll take right side uh so it lacks strategy but it's a really just chill game and i wanted to i want to take my mouse and click on heads and have it go wang and get headshots this week and that's what i decided to do sounds like a good time sounds fun you want to take some questions before we wrap this thing up absolutely hello there hello there hello there <laughs> I'm laughing at chat. Someone just said, I just resub, so you better remain YouTubers. <laughs> I don't think it's going. No, no. Our label on ourselves is not going to affect the channel's uh, continued existence. I'm having an existential crisis, not a, not a uh, going to stop doing stuff crisis. Yes. It's one of those where, you know, your parents ask you what you do and you've been saying podcast for years and they go, what's that? I wonder how YouTuber would land. I haven't, I haven't really told them the update. I, uh, uh, adult, uh, uh, sentence is about to leave my mouth. Uh, I had to get on board with a new dermatologist last week and they asked, what do you do? And I was just like, yeah, YouTuber, it's just easier. It's just easier. People know what that is. They do. They it's do. wonderful. Is a podcaster and people are still like, what's that again? What's that? You do like, like uh, radio and you're like, well, kind of, sort of, kind of, not really, not traditional yeah. in the sense. It was nice. It was nice. Anyways, if you want to write in, be a part of the show, feedback at startgrindinggear.com is the place to do so, or we have a dedicated channel where you can put questions. It's called Ask the Hosts. It is under the members lounge of our Discord, which you can get access to that if you support us on Patreon, or if you're a member of the YouTube membership program, both work, both support us, both let you ask us questions directly. Sonic Rose did exactly that and said, hey, I want to know, favorite franchise, that hasn't gotten a movie or TV adaptation. I mean, Starcraft. Oh, I was going to say, I know your answer, but that yeah. wasn't it. What was I going to go for? Mass Effect. I thought was going to be your answer. I think Mass Effect has a uh, RPG element that would be not good to remove. It's about choices. I don't mind a Last of Us TV show because that game wasn't about choices. I didn't choose anything. I, I, I played a linear story. I maybe chose how many knives I wanted to make. <laughs> but outside of that, no, StarCraft would be amazing. I would love to see a more grounded space trucker movie. I don't want to go full CGI. I think it World of Warcraft movie. The World of Warcraft movie was three movies too deep. Like, that's the one that should have been made way down the road when we have a much more grounded fantasy movie. And I'd love to have a nice... Basically, the long version of that uh, was a StarCraft original cutscene where they go into the science vessel 
and there's a couple of hydralists living in there. Mm. The guy's like, I love cold fusion, and those mouths do not work. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And I was reminded recently that there was a Mass Effect movie that got canned. There was supposed to be a Mass Effect movie, but it it died in production. They made an anime. I don't remember if I don't I don't think I ever watched. It. I think they tried to do another tie into with Dragon Age and Dead Space had a cartoon that was bad, as I remember it. Dead Space anime is pretty as pretty as something that gory can be. I, I, but. Yeah. I don't think you can land that either. Yeah. Um, what are you going to go with? Throw a dart at Valve, either Portal or Half-Life. I would die for Ooh. either. Hmm. Oh, Portal would be fun. Portal would be fantastic. Have you seen the short? Do they do a live action short? It It's a it's fan made, which was Dan Trachtenberg, who went on. He did Prey interesting but before he started doing feature films he did a fantastic self-made portal short and it's really good is that where he got his start or was this like an independent project that he was just passionate about as an already successful person it is an independent project that he did just because he's passionate but i believe that's what kind of got him his first feature gig glados a portal fan film uh no it's called no escape oh okay no escape live action yeah. portal movie yeah, Dan Trachtenberg, I really like this guy. I love his aesthetic and just the way he directs. And this was the first time I had ever heard of him was this No Escape short. And then, because that was 2011. And if I pull up his directing credits, he then got 10 Cloverfield Lane in 2016. Dude, his IMDb directing credits, Portal No Escape 2011, 10 Cloverfield Lane 2016. He literally went from this short to a feature length film. So, yeah. Oh, huh. They're they're <laughs> battling people in this. Yes. Hmm. That is not how I would take the movie. I would want like a you think you're talking to a real person the whole time, but the twist is it's not it's a real person, it's a robot at the end. And you are actually alone. I think you could That's I think the zoom total, out you've got such a simple but understandable high concept with the portal gun that you could take it any direction you want to go, and I think you could have a good time with it. I don't know how you fill out 90 minutes with that concept, <laughs> but I mean, GLaDOS was fascinating. All of GLaDOS and, you know, this, uh, what's, what's this potato gun bombs? What's the bomb man? Oh, Wheat Wheatley? No, the, the Wheatley was great too, but what's, what's the name of it? Cave Johnson. Cave Johnson. Oh, Cave Johnson. Yeah. Oh, you think about Cave Johnson. Oh, I'm a, oh, the one I'm going to burn down your house yeah. with the lemons. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Cave Johnson was fantastic. I think people take up time in movies and doing a people-less portal, portal movie with just the main actress as the main character. You know, it'd be kind of like a Muppet movie in that way. Otherwise, it's all robots. <laughs> it's impractical effects would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, yeah, I'd love a Half-Life or, or a Portal show. Um, can I reject the existence of other things? Because I would love a good Warcraft anything. Sure, sure. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I'm saying, you know, StarCraft in a vacuum, right? Like, you know, there's there's a yeah. track record involved there. I don't want to see World of Warcraft movie made in StarCraft, but I would certainly enjoy that. You know, a, a, a dark, slow Diablo movie would be super fun, too. But a lot of those are about pacing. And I don't think... A small-scale adventure set in the Diablo universe would be really cool. Yeah. What's that? What's that terrible Nicolas Cage movie you like? Season of the Witch. Yeah, Season of the Witch. Yeah. Yeah. If you do that, you do Season of the Witch with a Diablo IP. I'd watch the shit out of that. I remember liking Black Plague as well. Uh, that was uh, with um, I've never seen that one. Sean Bean. I haven't seen that one. It's, Is that the one where he gets ripped apart by horses? I believe so. Yes. Oh, okay. I've only seen the death scene. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's at the end. <laughs> Otherwise, he's in, you know, a good chunk of the movie. <laughs> Spoilers for a very old movie, sorry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, yeah. It's, you know, maybe it's worth giving the uh, the note that I think uh, it had greater favor for me because I remember Sean Bean being in the majority of the film, which is, I love Sean Bean, but oftentimes, Silent Hill included, he's not in a lot of the movie that he's participating in. That is That is fair. That is fair. <sighs> you know, I'd love a good Prince of Persia thing too. Again, I know Aren't they, they got the movie. Well, oh, they did they, a movie. They did the it's movie. just not. It's not very good. No, it wasn't. Um, as I remember it, it was a little, 
like dark, not uh, just in camera quality. Like there, there seemed to be a lot of uh, cut and corners with kind of how it was shot. Maybe it was. It just looked. It looked cheap to me. Yeah, maybe that's kind of what I'm feeling. Yeah, yeah, but no, I'm gonna go with Half Life or Portal. You're gonna go with Starcraft, and I'm gonna root for you because I would watch the hell out of a Starcraft show. Yeah, I used to watch the heck out of Roughnecks, uh, the Saturday morning cartoon. Wasn't Starship that based Troopers. on Starship Troopers? Yeah, it was a Starship Troopers show for kids. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a weird property to make a kid show out of. But oh, hey, yeah, it, it was. I had RoboCop toys, so what I, are you going to do? It was one of, it was like my first dark space fantasy sci-fi thing. Yeah, it had some, it was very, very zergy. Like there was the guy that got infested and now he, you know, he was like betraying the team. If you ever saw Lost in Space with um, Commissioner Gordon. Commissioner Gordon. Yeah, with um, uh, always playing different people. Very, very, very transformative actor. You know, always, always playing something wildly different. Are we talking about the 90, 1998 one? I believe so. That was the year. Why that had I... um, that had Gary Oldman. As Gary the, Oldman. Yeah, as Gary the Oldman. Villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have seen that one. I was weirdly into that movie as a kid. <laughs> like ninety percent of the plot of Roughnecks was that movie. <laughs> with uh, Gary Oldman. That movie does not hold up, by the way. I'm sure it doesn't. I'm sure the graphics are awful. But oh boy, when did this come out? 98. Yeah, yeah. I loved this movie. I was really into this. I thought it was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal was in Prince of Persia, wasn't he? He was the Prince of Persia. I think that was one of the you first. You know, yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal of Persian descent. I, I think that was the first movie I kind of liked him in. I, I don't like Donnie. Really? I don't like Donnie Darko. So everything. Uh, I like Jake Gyllenhaal a lot, but. um. I'm not the, you know, a lot of people assume, I think, because I, I love emo things, that I love Donnie Darko. I don't love Donnie Darko. Yeah, I would assume that on you, too, because Donnie Darko is, like, right in the camp of Nightmare Before Christmas. Like, all the kids that love Nightmare Before Christmas yeah, love it's Donnie not, Darko. But I'm going to come over to your side of the tracks for a second. It's not fun. Donnie Darko is no a pretty joyless experience. And not in a way that I like it enough to to, like... Like, I love Breaking Bad so much that I'm happy to sit through the, the joyless parts. By the way, in my rewatch, I did not realize how much of a comedy Breaking Bad is. It is so much funnier in this rewatch I'm doing right now. Interesting. It is, it's such a dark comedy, man. It's so funny. The writing in this, oh, going back through Breaking Bad, it's so good. But it doesn't matter. I'm not going to sit here and tell you Breaking Bad is good. Everyone on this planet's <laughs> heard it too many times. Um but yeah, no, 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 I don't love, I don't love Donnie Darko. The, my, my, um, Jake Gyllenhaal is unhinged. My favorite Jake Gyllenhaal is unhinged movie is Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler? He is Did he absolutely, no, has nothing to do with X-Men. You would hate this movie. I freaking love this movie. <laughs> hmm. It hmm. is, uh, yeah, it is extremely not X-Men. Now he's a, uh, in that movie, he's basically a paparazzi that starts committing his own crime so he can be first to the scene and sell it to the local uh, news channels in L.A. Oh, sure. And yeah, he's he's just an absolute sociopath. And I think it's one of the best things I've ever seen Jake Gyllenhaal in. That's a fun storyline. Bill Paxton's in it. Huh? Huh? Yeah, I think I... Yeah, it's a hell of a cast, man. Riz Ahmed was in it before he kind of blew up. Uh, it's it's a very good movie. I do like uh, Jake Gyllenhaal just because he always looks like he's having fun in interviews. He's, he seems like yes. a, a jolly man. He seems like a cool guy. Yeah. He seems like a cool guy. I, re I remember watching uh, a friend was like, this was back in the day where I was of an age where if you had said broke back bound, I'm like, I don't want to watch the movie about the gay cowboys. I watched it because a friend was like, we should watch this freaking amazing movie. Jake Gyllenhaal's amazing in it. Uh, but I was, you know, oh, young right, and dumb enough to not want to watch that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that was probably the first time I ever saw Jake Gyllenhaal in a really dramatic role. Dude can act. So anyway, uh, I'd like to see true. a good Prince of Persia. I'd I like saw to see it, a good Prince of Persia. I saw it for film class in college. Film mm, class. That seems like the kind of place you would see. I saw Citizen Kane that way. Oh, it was a great location because, of course, you know, the time period what, was 2005, right? Like everyone was memeing on it and meme wasn't a word yet. It was really nice yeah, to yeah, watch no, it in I, a like, serious like <laughs> vacuum where everybody was talking about the film. I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to come up with like a polite way to say like I, we were still being dicks to the gay community, I think, in a in a pretty general way when like, you know, I had not gotten out of my shitty Internet edgelord phase yet. And then I saw it and I was like, holy shit, this is a good movie. Like. 
I'm starting to think that might have actually helped me stop being a dick. But yeah, it's a good movie. It was. Yeah. Lee yeah. Jalen Hall's a hell of an actor. Uh, Prince of Persia, not a good movie. No, no. Despite. Not, a, not, <laughs> as, not as I remember it. it. Not as I remember it at all. I, I never saw Bubble Boy. <laughs> I'm not going to go too deep in this, but, you know, I haven't <laughs> oh, seen you know a lot what? of Jake no, Gyllenhaal uh, movies. Uh, uh, yeah, we were going from something like one of his best dramatic roles to Bubble Boy, but um, I loved Bubble Boy when I was of the age when that movie came out. That was the um, Adam Sandler thing? No. that was the, Adam Sandler had nothing to do with Bubble oh, Boy. Oh, I, I think I just saw someone like screaming, yo, he's in the bubble. He's the Bubble Boy. He is the yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal is the Bubble Boy. Okay. That might have been the first thing I ever saw him in. Maybe Water Boy and Bubble Boy came out around the same time, and I just sort of <laughs> they didn't they did not, but that's probably why you're mixing them in yeah. your brain. <laughs> Bubble Boy uh, plays the living hell out of the Blink One Eighty Two song "Damn It," which is really all you need to know about why I like that movie. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, whatever, whatever we would make Jake Gyllenhaal, please, so we'll cast him. <laughs> it's like an, just a, it, it's like you took pop punk, you had the soundtrack before you made the movie, and that's how they made Bubble Boy. The marvelous Bert Alvarez wrote in and said, uh, "This is more to Garrett, but what is it about Final Fantasy XIV that used to turn you off? Besides, quote, it's a shitty weeb game full of nonsense." <laughs> End quote. Okay, first of all, I don't think I ever said that. <laughs> No, that was just the title that we used for the clickbait on YouTube. But I believe there wasn't anything about nonsense in there. I mean, I did a little bit think of it as like a quote unquote weep game. Uh, I'll be honest. I'm like, oh, people just play this because they want to be a bunny girl. Like that, that I did have a bit of a, of a hand wave. Um, not that there's anything wrong with wanting to be a bunny girl. I'm not judging you. But I did just kind of assume, oh, I think people will just play this, you know, because they're thirsty. Um, I did not realize there's one of the best narratives to be found in gaming in Final Fantasy 14. So, um, no, I've, I've said this a few places, but we can have this conversation here, which is uh, when I first when I started playing it by myself, which was probably over two years ago, when I like when it kind of had its first surge of wild WoW players are leaving WoW to play Final Fantasy 14. I'm like, all right, I'll go give it a shot. I immediately could not stand how many load screens there were. I've talked about this on stream. I don't think I talked about it on the podcast, but oh boy, the load screens really, they really got to me. I, I just thought, I'm like, this is, this came out after World of Warcraft. Why, why am I loading every two feet? Cause I originally started with an archer and I started in the black shroud, which now that I've seen all the starting zones, black, I don't like the black shroud at all. I think it's like such I a, started a there very too. standard forest It's a very standard forest. If I had started in Limsa, I think I would have stuck with it. I really like the Limsa story. I love Merwib. I love final fantasy spin on pirates. So I, I think part of that's that I, I, I don't think the seed seer is a particularly cool leader. I actually think she's the one I like the least of the three big world leaders. Um, but then just the load screens, man. It was just loading constantly all the time. So it, that really, to me, just felt like I'm, I'm playing a game in 2020. Why the hell are there load screens <laughs> in an MMO? But I get it's made for, I understand now it's made for console. And oh my God, we're, we're in, you know, throughout Stormblood, there's so few load screens now. They've decreased for sure. There's still the occasional yeah. one, but they're also better paced or put in locations that aren't as uh, like in Heaven's Word. We were talking about like going down the cool, cool stairs in Sky Pirates and being like, oh, you load screen through the cool part. And now they, they kind of like you fall into darkness instead. And as you emerge from darkness, you are now loaded in the new area and they kind of cover that in their own way. But I, I was with you when I first tried it. I started as an archer. This was back in like 2018. Um, in New Gridani when I first tried it, and I, I quit rather fast because I was just lost. Um, there was a lot of language I was missing. I still feel like MMOs are uh, oral tradition in a lot of ways. There's a lot of shared experience, and you need to be able to talk to somebody else to answer your questions, and I didn't have that in my life at the time. I need a guide, mm. and I, I needed John, and John gave mm. me that guide. Mm. I... You, you, same thing kind of happened with you when I started replaying. We started playing a, together a lot, and that also helped a ton. Because Roamborn is slow. I didn't 
think it was as slow as everyone was telling me it was in the moment. Looking back on it now, having done Heavensward and Stormblood, now A Realm Reborn seems slow by comparison. But I don't think it's that bad in retrospect. When I was going through it in the moment when I finally kind of got over the hump and kept playing, leading to what we're doing now, I enjoyed ARR enough. Yeah. It was fine. But yeah, it's really just a little It's such a big thing for me. But uh, before I started playing too, I also like, I didn't think the game looked good. We've gone down this rabbit hole a lot and it makes a lot of people mad when I'm like, I really like how WoW looks. And everyone's like, oh my God, I'm not talking about graphical fidelity. I'm talking about art direction. Um, I, I just was like, it looks like anime, which I'm not against, but it just kind of looks like anime. Whereas like World of Warcraft is a very, like you can see a, a snippet of art from it. You know exactly, you know, you're looking at Blizzard art, right? Um, I have since gotten over that as well. Uh, I still think there are places in the Realm Reborn that look really crusty, but holy crap, some of the vistas in Stormblood, especially as we get towards Shadowbringers, the game's a total feast for the eyes. Yeah, I started watching that uh, that YouTube you recommended, Every Frame of Painting. Was that what it... I don't think they make oh, anything yeah, anymore. Oh, yeah, dude, that YouTube makes me so sad. I wish they were still doing it. It was really cool. It was a really cool bit of content. I, I know they're an editor. Hopefully they just got so busy with awesome an awesome job uh, that they uh, didn't have time to produce it anymore. It definitely took a lot of work to make that. YouTube I, I still think that's one of the greatest YouTube channels I've ever seen. It was really, and, really good. And they don't make stuff anymore. And it makes me sad. I'm sure they're still making stuff, but they don't make stuff for that channel anymore. Like you said, I, I really hope that they're not doing it just because they're just buried under success. Because right. that, that channel is my favorite video essays ever but we so good we've seen that quality like increase dramatically uh, and and with that i didn't have as many struggles early on but i'm with you that it's improved because now end of storm blood when you stop somewhere particularly a vista you're like wow look at all the sites look how they connect and they make a beautiful picture uh world of warcraft was very interested in having those screenshot kind of moments but once you got into the thick of a realm of boring the visual language of it developed and much like we talked about with, you know, uh, JRPGs earlier, like your brain can kind of fill in the holes that might be missing. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I've been, you know, revisiting, uh, classic right now. Wow. Classic. And I like they're the broad, the big picture. I still think that game looks nice. They have this amazing palettes, the uh, really nice, like the way that they do lighting in that game and they paint, you know, especially in older while they had to paint, lighting into the game in places with their texture work like there's stuff about it that i still really like i enjoy the craft of that game and the way it looks and i i understand it's a product of its time i didn't have that with final fantasy so the older stuff in that game just looked dated to me as a newcomer um but have oh you boy, seen have you seen footage of like look. ray traced old quake or ray traced doom original doom no oh they're beautiful what, wait, ray tracing pixels yeah original like, doom is sprite yeah yeah oh well maybe not maybe not doom uh but uh, like quake quake was this okay uh yeah, there's quake was 3d yeah the original doom is, is freaking maybe it was like doom 64 or something like that that i saw but either way like i'm really excited for the lighting update and what it could do to a realm reborn because mm. that could really just amp that up and be really really pretty yeah yeah as with it you, you know you get hooked eventually eventually you you have a sense of ownership if you stick with an mmo along long enough that's that's definitely the case with me i've only ever achieved it with world of warcraft swotor and now final fantasy 14 where it's like my character is my character like i'm, I'm attached to my armor like i, I want to change now they're gonna turn shadow bringers but i don't like I, this like this is this is what my dude wears like it's just uh the game goes places. We already we already said it's a slow burn. Like that's that's how it goes to that's that's my my boil down of Final Fantasy fourteen. But uh, it's a slow burn and it's very worth it. It's very worth the payoff. And boy, does it pay off. And I'm not even done with the game yet. You could play to the end of Stormblood, and I think you'd have a good. You know, honestly, you could play to the end of the free trial because that's what Heaven's Word. Yeah, Heaven's Word was solid. Heaven's Word has such a strong ending. Like if I had if I had to sit on that for years before the next expansion. I could have done so contently. I would have been pissy sitting on the end of Stormblood, man. <laughs> I, know we've, <laughs> I know we've taken our time. Knowing it's there has given me comfort. And I've enjoyed taking our time. But the way the story uh, and the way they built the world up to that point, I would just be, I'd be insufferable. Very specifically over there, like, go to this location and find a thing. 
like if I had to sit on that for months, yeah, I would probably be losing my mind. Heaven's Ward felt like it read a really satisfying conclusion. Yeah, it was a good bookend. Yeah. Literally a bookend. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we've kind of already got into uh, Bert's second question here, but said for both of us, what part of 14 do we like the most? Um, yeah, I feel like we kind of already got into that, but I think for me, the thing that has made me want to come back to it are the characters. Cause you and I keep talking about how you're like, you're like focusing on like the, the magic lore with like the snake people. And I'm, I'm just like, I don't care. I'm here for the characters. I don't, I don't care how the world works. Um, I'm here for the characters and their journey, but, um, I'm really, I really like the, for lack of a better term, the meat grinder, they throw their characters through. Good story. I like, for me, it's just co-op. Like you can do everything in the world, uh, to invest me in there and story, art, community, all that serves to make the game somewhere I want to live. Now I need a challenge. Now I need something I'm going to actually play. And I think the co-op's amazing. I think it's a great co-op game. If you're, yeah. if you're enjoying Deep Rock Galactic, if you enjoy Divinity, or two original sin, like any of these sort of uh, RPG co-op games, Vermintide even, like I, get your friends into Final Fantasy XIV. It's a good time. Shinryu Extreme is still my favorite thing we've done. Full stop. Yeah. Like I said, I think the we talked about battle. this a couple episodes ago. That's where I fell in love with the game. I fell in like with the game in Heaven's Ward. I fell in love with the game when we did Shinryu Extreme. Yeah. Fjord Explorer asked us, uh, your audience is continuing to rapidly grow, rightfully so. Take uh, take a chance for a little self-advertising. Suggest one piece of past content you've created pre-Final Fantasy XIV that you would recommend new listeners or watchers go check out. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, There's a lot there. I, I, I could jump on one. I could jump on one. Go for it. I, I'm, I'm trying to find the thing. I know what I want to recommend, but I'm trying to find it. I, I do a D&D show with my buddies over at the Core Podcast. I do a D&D show called There Will Be Dungeons, and I did a limited run, uh, three seasons, 12 episodes, so 36 episode arc called The Delvers, where I DM'd with music drops, sound effects, voice changers, a arc of Dungeons and Dragons. I believe it was from level one, fifth edition to maybe level 13 or 11 or so. I'm immensely proud of it. I love getting to DM that. I thought the story was awesome. You know, it's it's live D&D, &D, right? There's going to be hiccups where the players did things I just did not expect and I had to scramble. But I am so hugely proud of my first ever foyer into DMing live. Because uh, I love DMing in person over the internet. It just ain't the same. So this was, of course recorded with online you know accoutrements across the web with friends but go check out there will be dungeons delvers uh, you'll have to scroll back a little bit the campaign moved on there was a new campaign bo schwartz now dming over there love that too. i made an appearance yeah yeah you were you were a special guest during the dragon hunt episode yeah it was, i love that character that was a fun character to be there will be dungeons delvers check it out i love it i loved it i um we mentioned uh, my so my now defunct solo podcast, R2T2. Um, I loved everything about that show, but if there's one episode I would highly recommend, it is still up because some of the older episodes uh, were back in the day of when we had a GoDaddy server, if you remember when we hosted on GoDaddy right. Kyle. When that went down, a lot of old episodes went down, and I haven't gone back to re-upload them because very few people care um, for old podcasts. But um, episode 60 is still up and uh i've found it so i'll link it here for our youtube viewers it's audio only this is before uh i was versed in the way of youtube but uh what this scott how long ago was this 2018 is when this went up 2018 oh man youtube is uh lagging on me um we did a trip to new york city with our, our mutual friends, you know them, Kyle, uh, Ben and Abby. Mm -hmm. We used to podcast with Ben. We did. Yeah, so we used to podcast with Ben for a long time. For years, we podcasted with Ben. We did a, a Blizzard news show with Ben called This Week in Blizzard, and then eventually we did A Move Radio with, with, with Ben, which A Move Radio is basically the proto for this show, I would say. This show is somehow a long evolution of A Move Radio. But... um. 
the four of us all went to New York City at the exact same time. And uh, some of you probably know I am a big cocktail nerd. And we have a home bar and we make a lot of our own cocktails and stuff. And uh, the way we learned how to make cocktails was from books. And those books came from bars in New York City. And so we went and... Uh, oh my God, you're like look, go, looking at wow yeah. stuff there, Kyle. Yeah, well, well this you... is R2T2. I'm, I'm scrolling back. I got, yeah. here we go. Here we go. Yeah, find 60. There's, there's Katie, me, Abby, and Ben all yeah. in a row. So for everyone being like, Gary's got long hair and a beard right now. Oh my God, he looks so different. I had long hair and a beard in 2018. There was a time. Um, there was a time, yes. But yeah, so we all we went to New York together and we drank at as many of these famous cocktail bars as we could make it to. And then we, when we got back to Florida, I set up uh, my every microphone I had uh, on my dining room table. And we came over and we talked about our favorite drinks and our favorite bars. And we just sat down and had a an hour plus long conversation about what it was like to go to these bars that we'd been dying to go experience. And I just love this podcast dearly. It's a fun episode that uh, I, I think not enough people listen to. Nice. Massive le- labor of love there. So, yeah, if you want to understand why I'm such a dork about mixed drinks, uh, this will start to let you know why. I want to go back to New York so freaking bad, dude. Oh, my God. I haven't been since then. This is the last time I was in New York. I had a good time. I was in New York for a wedding. Um, it was a big wedding, too. Like a big, big wedding. Uh, it was it was really fun. Um, but when we did the car ride home, the Uber, you know, he's like, hey, you here to live? We're like, no, no, just visiting. He's like, good. <laughs> and then oh left it at God. that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> OK, all right, then. I had one then of those on our honeymoon. We went to Maui for our honeymoon and we got lost on a back road somewhere and this guy walking his dog and i was like i'm sorry how do how do we get back out of here and he just starts yelling at us about how i live here and i was like okay i'm just gonna back up and leave this guy yep yeah he was weird it was weird it was the only experience i had like that in maui everyone else was awesome but yeah guy was not happy it was weird yeah i found it the, the chat was asking for a link to the uh the there will be dungeon show there it is uh i'll, I'll put it I'll put it there. I'll put it some other places. I'll put it on our Discord or something like that, too. Very proud of that. Nice. Nice. Well, keep those emails coming. Feedback at startgrindinggear.com or just uh, drop it in the Discord channel if you're supporting us on YouTube or on Patreon. And speaking of which, it's time to do some Patreon shoutouts, yes. Kyle, as we wrap this up. Thank you so much to our wonderful, badass patrons supporting us on patreon you can support everything that kyle and i make together by going to support our that'll just link it directly to our patreon we split it if anyone's wondering about it, like all the minutiae of how we run a business kyle whatever comes in there we just split it that's how we do it that's how we do it whatever we make we split and uh that's how that is run so thank you to our recent patrons we got some new folks to thank this week so we're going to start off by thanking amy mw thank you amy russell w Thank you for your support. Xavier, thanks for signing up. And Kyle, yes. we have two new legendary level backers this Amazing. week, which is awesome. Hell yeah. Thank you to the DOS, DOS. or as I've been calling him, Boss DOS. Boss DOS. And Cheesy Bob! Cheesy Bob! We know that name! Cheesy Bob, good to see ya. Good to how see ya. How you doing? Hit us up on Discord, let us know how you doing. And uh, this, as as mentioned, kind of let the you know let it out of the bag. But there's a very special level of patrons that we thank each and every episode. And those are our legendary level backers. Thank you so much for your generous support. Sean B, Mike R, Stephen J, Dagny, Wayward E, Das, and Cheesy Bob. The show Welcome exists the because club. of all of you. But thank you to our legendary backers. Yes. Yes, we really do appreciate the support, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Garrett Art. You can follow Kyle at Kyle Ferguson. You can follow the joint account at Garrett and Kyle for go live notifications about anything we're doing and also when we post stuff. And of course, check out youtube.com slash TV to get our live streams. We live stream this show every Thursday afternoon, as well as our Final Fantasy 14 live streams, our Wednesday uploads, and you can also find links to our full stream VODs channel and our clips channel over at youtube.com slash TV. So go there, sub to the channel. We just hit 23,000 subs this week. Nice. Let's keep it going. 
Thanks so much, everybody. That's going to do it for this episode of the Grinding Gear Podcast. Until next time, GG.